I could say that I haven't turned the game on since the stream series ended back in May, but that would be a total lie. <laughs> I check back in with our friends at Luminous very, very frequently, very often, whether it's just to listen to music or to uh, just have like morning aerobics with them, like with doing dance exercises or anything like that, or just like going through the album of past conversations. I cannot put this game down. I have not been able to say goodbye to them even after 250 hours after three playthroughs it's it's one of if not the most special and precious game and projects i've ever created in my entire life so i'm gonna be emotional <laughs> today i apologize for that i'm i got a lot of stuff to talk about but the main topic of the day is not uh, the game itself. The main topic is of a certain event that took place that I would like to uh, relive with all of you. So, as I've talked about before, as I'm sure you all know, um, because obviously the Idol Master is an idol based video game franchise, there would of course be a lot of real life idol concerts that would take place alongside it. And something about that is that I've obviously never been able to attend one in person because I don't live in Japan and they've only been exclusive to Japan for the longest time. However, because of the events of the world, I guess you could call it, there was an opportunity for me to actually attend one virtually because I went ahead and I saw this. Let me see if I can pull this up. Are we good? Okay, cool. So, this tweet went out from the Idolmaster Twitter account stating that there was going to be an Idolmaster concert focused on the members of Namuko Pro, the original cast. And when I saw this, I was pretty surprised because this is not an automatic translated tweet done by Twitter. It was an actual English tweet from the Japanese Idolmaster account because for the first time in the franchise's history, the live concert was going to be available for streaming outside of Japan. So that was absolutely incredible and insane to see that appear for the first time. And when I saw that, I was like, I was like, do I actually go through with it? Because like, I, of course, it's like a bucket list dream of mine to want to be able to see an Idolmaster concert in person. Would I sully that experience if I uh, saw this one first? If I saw a virtual viewing before I saw an actual in-person viewing? But then I started looking at the stats because I've never really kept up with all the stats of like when concerts take place and how frequently they are. They happen plenty of times throughout the year, but there are a gajillion different uh, branches of the Idolmaster. There's like a bunch of different people who are part of it now and they... Um, all have their own separate concerts so, like you're not guaranteed to have like the specific idols you're looking for at your specific concert so in the case of Namiko Pro as the tweet says it is the first individual concert in about four and a half years meaning that this is a concert that's just completely separate from any other event it's not part of any other like convention or festival or anything like that it's just strictly an Idolmaster concert and this is the first solo live in four and a half years um, to feature the Namiko Pro All-Stars, and then it's also the first concert in five and a half years to have all of the original cast members in attendance. Because it's not easy arranging 12 different uh, seiyus to be part of a big event like this and like doing all the rehearsals for every dance routine and vocal practice and everything like that. It's a lot of stinking work as I'm sure you could imagine. Also, hello Dovey, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a nice day as well. But yeah, when I saw this, I was thinking to myself, like, I have to do it because there's no guarantee as to, like, how long this franchise will continue. And I was, we were literally being given an opportunity to support the franchise outside of Japan, which almost never happens. So, like, they were looking for direct feedback from international audiences. So I had to go ahead and do it. This was, it was not a question for me. I just had to go through with it. 
and now I'm here to finally talk about that experience with all of you. So, during the uh, live stream, um, there was a chat section where like all the other people who bought virtual tickets could talk to each other, so we were also... I was conversing with other producers as well, which was very, very fun. And then... I was also taking a copious amount of screenshots of the concert, which may or may not get me in trouble, but like, I'm not showing any footage. I obviously not be really showing, uh, playing any of the music from it. So I am actually hoping that it won't result in me getting into too much trouble. Only one way to find out. But yeah, I've got like several still images that I got for all of you, and then we're just gonna sort of talk about stuff. I'm just gonna go through like, what the entire event was like. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free to let me know. And I guess we'll just relive what my first concert experience was, what was like. So without further ado, let's see if I could uh, get through with this without uh, with all my channels still intact. Wish me luck. So if we could. That's the neat thing, we're always in trouble. Oh goody. So, starting off the concert, um, when people were, uh, you could see everyone walking into the venue, and also, like, there was a Japanese chat as well that was available that the American chat was looking into, and a lot of the Japanese audience was talking about how, um, a lot of the people in the crowd seemed to be a lot more older than they expected, and I guess, like, it's to be expected because, um, this is the oldest Idolmaster branch, and, uh, people who are attending this concert will probably have grown up with it and been fans of this specific group for a super long time so it only makes sense and um when we finally get into the concert of course we gotta start off with the president of namako pro president takagi shows up and just sort of introduces the event and uh, thanks everyone for being here gives you know, the rundown and all the rules and stuff which is all fine and dandy but then also to accompany him we have kotori who also appears in silhouette form uh, she's the secretary of Namiko Pro, of course, as you know, but I don't know if the silhouette form of her has ever existed before. That was sort of a, a surprise to me, at least. And so that was really fun. And then Kotori was just, like, telling you the rules of the theater, being like, make sure you stay seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle, and do watch your children. It's just stuff like that. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, after all of them were uh, discussing everything with that they went ahead and did the introductions of all of the characters so i'm not gonna go through a rundown of every single character obviously like we already had like a 250 hour let's play with these characters hopefully you know who these are who these people are already but we're not here to spend time with the characters we're here to spend time with the seiyus so there are going to be some new faces and new personalities that we're going to be meeting today, and that is what I'm very excited to highlight for all of you, to see uh, how similar certain seiyus are to their characters, how different they are from their characters, and also just seeing like how passionate everyone has been for being part of this franchise for 17 years now. This is... this. I imagine this concert was meant to take place during Idolmaster's 15-year anniversary, but because of pandemic reasons, it had to get put on hold. So, we're still going strong celebrating the... Uh, celebrating Idol Master's 15th anniversary and there'll be a lot of mention of that and as well as a lot of other fun announcements so let's get started so let's see what we got here's our first shot of the venue and everyone's coming in which is very very exciting and then the lights dim and you can see everyone's glow sticks and everything I finally got an answer to uh, how the glow sticks work which was super exciting because like for the longest time I didn't know if you actually were expected to buy each individual glow stick for each individual idol if you wanted to cheer them on but no each glow stick actually has the power to change colors just by pressing a button so thankfully uh they aren't that stingy with money though each glow stick does have a personal embroidery design on it so uh there is that uh you didn't know no i didn't know that i never knew i thought like we had a discussion about it nightshade where i was just like how do the glow sticks work do it's like the auditorium change the colors do like the player the, the audience do it do we have to buy individual ones i have no idea and like there are individual glow sticks for like each specific idols like have little designs on so i was like maybe i do have to buy each individual one who knows also hello jobadaya thank you so much for being here hope you are doing well so once the lights dimmed we are going to finally get introduced let's see if i can 
uh, make this slide over here. And right off the bat, we have our first song of the our first song of the performance, our first song of the night. <laughs> So they open up with a song that I have never heard before, actually. This is We Have a Dream, which is from, it originated from a slot machine, an Idol Master slot machine that was made in 2012. This is the first time it's ever made an appearance in a concert. And because it originates from a slot machine, like I probably never would have heard of the song until, unless it made an appearance in a game or in this case, at a specific concert. So that was very, very exciting to like, just open up with a song I'd never heard before. and. Again, just seeing everyone on stage together, it absolutely blew me away. So I was very, very happy to just see the stage and like, ever, any sort of doubt I had about whether or not I should have bought these tickets or whatever, it was immediately justified as soon as I started, as soon as I saw them, I was just like, I'm so happy to be here and witnessing this with everyone. And again, with the chat and everything, it was, uh, it was like I wasn't really alone throughout the entire thing, because I was able to see everyone else's reactions to seeing all these seiyus that we have like been with for almost two decades at this point which is absolutely incredible and something i always have tried to make sure is emphasized with the idol master is that it's not your traditional idol experience both within the game world and also within the real world because as you can see like these seiyus have been performing for two decades at this point and i know a lot of people have like certain they have certain interpretations on what the idol industry is like, and I'm not gonna say that um, the Idol Master specifically is completely devoid of certain uh, elements to it that are less than desirable. But um, something I appreciate is that like they are seiyus who perform as idols rather than idols strictly, so they are able to sort of not really accommodate to the traditional format of like what idols are expected to be to the general public so um that's how they've been allowed to stick around for so long and also like they're the ones who created this entire industry so um i feel like they more than have the power and the right of course like everyone has the power and the right to do like whatever the fruit they want but like um no one's ever gonna tell them that they're doing anything um incorrectly because they're the ones who defined this entire generation and i'm very very happy to have like discovered them when i did i didn't discover them the literal second Idol Master was created, but pretty darn close to the beginning, and I'm very grateful to have stuck around with it for so long and to see them still here. And of course, you see in the background, I was losing my mind because the last time I saw Makoto Seiyu, she did not have that short of hair before, and I was so stinking happy when I saw her hair cut like that. I was already crying. I was like just having a counter, being like, all right, how long's it gonna take for a minute to start crying? And sure enough, it was not any time at all. It was just like two or three seconds and I was losing my stinking mind. So I'm gonna be talking more about that later, but um, something that I wanna try and make sure I do throughout this entire event is that I want to refer to all of the seiyus by their actual names rather than the character names because surprise, surprise, actors are not their characters. So I wanna make sure that there is the separation between them. Also, I wanna make sure that they're given proper credit for their in-person performances. And, um, yeah, just if case you aren't familiar with everyone's names, we'll be going down the line and making sure we get acquainted with everyone, and it'll be easy peasy to follow. So, let's go ahead and get introduced to everyone, shall we? So first off, we have Rie Kugimiya. She is the seiyu for Iori Minase, and, um, she is without question one of the most prolific seiyus in all of Japan. You have most likely heard her in a gajillion different things aside from the Idol Master. Out of all the seiyus, she probably has the, like, the most uh, successful voice acting career. She voices, along with Yori, she voices Risei in uh, Persona 4. She voices literally every single tsundere in every anime ever, aside from Yori. Uh, she is also, um, I don't know if you heard of this, it's like this little uh, under the radar show. I'm not sure what it, what it was called. Um, oh yeah, Full Metal Alchemist. She's the voice of Alphonse Elric. Like... It's absolutely insane to hear about all the different things she's done. She's absolutely incredible, legendary, and just so, so amazing. And just, like, I can't ever get over just how much stuff she's done. And it was, like, right around the time where she had gotten cast as Yori, where her voice acting career took off and exploded. 
and it was sort of a shock to her, so, like, she thought she was going to be sticking with Yori, and, like, that was going to be, like, her main focus throughout the majority of her life, but then she wound up having so many more doors open up for her, and that has been, like, life-changing for her. But then it's also, like, sort of bittersweet at the same time because she doesn't know, like, how often she'll be able to voice Yori because of all the other things she's, uh, working on. But she's here right now, and I'm very, very immensely happy to have her. So then, up next, we're going to also, uh, in case you need to follow along with everyone, everyone's image colors. Uh, that's also a good way to remember who everyone is in case you, uh, need to remember that. So then let's go ahead and move to our next uh, member over here. We got Manami Numakura. She's the seiyu for Hibiki Ganaha. And I love that as soon as she uh, introduced herself, she did a high sigh, which Hibiki does, which I absolutely loved. Everyone introduced themselves with like their character introductions and then like their actual seiyu introduction, which is really, really fun. Um, out of uh, everyone IRL, uh, Manami is the youngest member of the original Namiko Pro cast, which is very, very fun. Um, <laughs> I like all the different the combo names that Nightshade's going with. It's very fun. And she just, like, has perfect energy, and then also, like, as you can start to tell, that, like, all the Seiyus have their hair styled in the way of their idol counterparts, which is amazing. I absolutely love that. But then, like, you gotta wonder, like, what came first, I guess? The chicken or the egg in terms of, like, did the Seiyus develop the personalities of the idols? Oh, they're real now? I know! Can you believe it? These graphics are amazing. <laughs> Um, like, did the Seiyus develop the appearances or personalities of the idols, or were the idols based off of the Seiyus? Or maybe it's a little combination of both. I'm sure, like, they both influenced each other as the years have gone on. Yeah, up next, I was absolutely <laughs> losing it when I saw, when I saw this one. This is Mayako Nigo. She is the voice actress Seiyu for Yayoi Takatsuki. And I finally got the spelling right. I'm like, for the longest time, I always, like, misspell... Her last time, I always misremember it. I thought I was getting it wrong with Takatsuki, so then I tried correcting myself with Tatatsuki, but then I realized I was right all along with Takatsuki, so I was very, very nervous that I was gonna end up spelling something wrong when uh, assembling this little uh, PowerPoint presentation for everyone. My yo yo Oh my god. Um, yeah, she is absolutely adorable. I was just like so stinking happy, I could not stop smiling. And of course, as soon as she introduced herself, she gave us the. The high touch. She was just like so energetic and like the perfect Seiyu for Yayoi. Just made me so stinking happy. I was over the moon excited for her. So then up next we got Asami Shimoda. She is the Seiyu for both Ami Futami and Mami Futami. So then that makes the tongue twister even more confusing because before we had Ami Mami a Mami Mami me, but now we also have Asami. So now it's Ami Mami a Mami Mami me Asami Ami Mami a Mami Mami me Asi me As. Oh god. <laughs> I'm trying my best here, but yeah, she voices both of both of them, and uh, she's also uh, the seiyu for a different pair of idol twins, Len and Rin Kagamine. So yeah, needless to say, she's very very experienced in voicing idol twins, and she just does an amazing job. She has like great energy. I love just how happy she was, and also um, as soon as everyone saw her um, with uh, mommy's hairstyle, everyone because this is a two day event, uh, which was nice for sleeping purposes but like also just like interesting for like what's gonna happen on both different days um when everyone saw her with mommy's hairstyle everyone in the chat was like i wonder if she's gonna have ami's hairstyle in the next day everyone was like super excited for that i guess there's only one way to find out i have no idea so then we go over here and we got ourselves azumi asakura she is the seiyu for yukiho hagiwara and i just absolutely adore like even as someone who's like aspiring to be like a uh, actor and voice actor and everything like that just seeing like the physicality in every single say you how they're able to like encapsulate the idle counterpart and then like when they switch over to just speaking uh casually it's just like very very interesting to study and to see and everything like that so um of course yukiho is one of my top three favorite idols and she is absolutely precious and darling i absolutely loved her and yeah, she just, like, captures her uh, presence and her essence perfectly, which I really, really loved. And then, up next we got... We have Yumi Hara, who is the seiyu for Takane Shijo. Now, um, when seeing, like, the differences between everyone's voices, they're... Um, some of them are slightly altered from the re regular speaking voices and regular singing voices. Uh, Yumi's is probably the, one of the more drastic ones. She has, like... Because um, Takane has, like, 
a, a very deep, low tone voice, and then like talks very elegantly and stuff, and then hearing the switch between Yumi and Takane was very, very interesting, but like also just like she has amazing range. She's able to like nail both of those personalities perfectly, and it was just very, very fascinating to watch. It was very, very fun. And that's also like just another thing you wouldn't ever discover if you weren't uh, watching it live and in person. And up next, okay. So this is Chiaki Takahashi. She's the save for Asamura. I don't know how to. She's she's Al Al Albedo. Uh, who, who's who's that person specifically? Asami Mami. <laughs> Sorry, when was this concert again? This concert took place on July 9th and July 10th. Uh, so it was a very summery concert. Very nice purple. So um, the reason I was losing my mind just now is because um. Chiaki is maybe possibly the star of the show. <laughs> I'm trying not to spoil it, but like, um, the best thing I can say is that you won't look at Azusa the same way you did after today because, my god, Chiaki was definitely the, one of the highlights of this entire event, and I'm very, very excited to, like, share a lot of, like, fun moments with her on stage because she was absolutely amazing and hilarious, but... We'll get to that when we get to that, but like anytime I see her, I'm just gonna start losing it. I apologize in advance. Oh my god, I'm so excited. But she is absolutely hilarious and amazing. Okay, so up next we have um uh, we have Naomi Wakabayashi, she's the save for Ritsuko Akizuki. Um in terms of like the um the Seiyu's real life ages, she is the oldest member, but also something I want to make sure is emphasized throughout this entire event is that she is without question the most passionate and devoted Idolmaster fan on the entire planet. She absolutely adores her job. She encapsulates everything about the entire franchise and like wears her heart on, on her sleeve at all times. She is the nicest person on the entire planet. I'm just like very, very excited to share all like the emotional, very high energy and super happy kind hearted moments uh throughout this entire event with her she was absolutely wonderful and like it's impossible not to smile when you see her she's just so incredibly kind okay and you see who's up next right we got the one the only Hirobi! i'll try to stay away from the mic when i want to do the yelling this time because now i don't have i'm not tethered to a headset so I'll try my best. No guarantee it's gonna happen every single time. But this is Hiromi Hirata. She's the save for Makoto Kikuchi, my favorite idol in all of Idol Master. I was sobbing when I saw her. I was so happy because the last time I saw her was in it was in February of 2021. Because she was part of one of the um one of the Idol Master directs that was advertising throughout the season, and she had long hair in that presentation, so. Um, when I had seen her like this, and like I, for those of you who saw like my, uh, Idolmaster tier list video, talk about like how much, uh, Makoto and her short hair and her appearance means to me and everything like that, how much it inspired me and, and like helps me and everything like that. Seeing Hiromi just have this drastically different hairstyle from everyone else as well, and like perfectly encapsulating everything that's wonderful about Makoto, it absolutely made me an emotional wreck. <laughs> I was just like very, very happy to see her like that. And, yeah, I'm just happy to see that she's always doing well. She's, like, the perfect... I cannot... I can't fathom anyone else than other than her voicing Makoto. She was absolutely perfect. Just, like, super confident, super cheery, always makes everyone happy, and just, like, she's very, very wonderful. So, yeah, that's her. And then up next we got... We got Akiko Hasegawa, who is the say for Miki Hoshi. Um, I guess, like... For fans of the OG Idolmaster, you may immediately recognize that her hairstyle is more so in line with Awakened Miki when uh, that was a thing back in the original Idolmaster game, and it was just very, very fun to see, and also just um, very high energy and outgoing, just like uh, just like Miki as well. So it's just like very fun to see her, and also just like having another part of Idolmaster history not forgotten because we don't get to see. Uh, from Awaken Miki all that often anymore, so like knowing that she like sort of lives on through Akiko and her appearance right now in this performance that's really, really fun. Oh boy. So up next we have We have a Sami Imai, who is the save for Chihaya Kisaragi and like one of the most incredible vocalists I've ever heard in my entire life. And something I love about her is just like because Chihai doesn't get to express herself all that often. Um, it just has 
sometimes struggles with expressing her emotions and whatnot. Asami is full on ready to like just be super happy and cheerful and just like she sort of reminds me of like what Chihaya is like at her absolute best when she's able to recover from everything that she's gone through because Chihaya's been through so much I know and it was just wonderful to see her just seem like um how like happy she was <laughs> I couldn't just get over her. like every time she smiled just made me smile and I'm just so excited to hear her sing because like she is only capable of doing absolutely perfect performances I have not ever heard anything from her that wasn't less than 100% perfect so just very happy to see her and of course she's in my top three as well so very very happy to see her and finally our fearless leader we have Eriko Nakamura who's the save for Haruka Amami she captures the energy of Idolmaster perfectly and you could tell like just with how emotional she gets with talking about how long she's been with the series and everything um she has seen this entire franchise evolve in ways that she never could have expected and just being able to still produce uh, content and perform as this character 17 years later it's absolutely incredible all of them are absolutely incredible and have gotten like only gotten a thousand times more wonderful as time has gone on so it's always just an uphill climb to more and more amazing and exciting adventures and with that our cast is complete so um just in case uh just uh, one last run down in case you want to have like uh easier time just following along with everyone uh you could pay attention to everyone's image color outfits to remind yourself of who is who uh rie is dressed in pink and she's the seiyuu of yori manami voices hibiki uh dressed in light blue maya ko voices yayoi dressed in orange asami shimoda voices the futami twins dressed in yellow azumi voices yukiho uh dressed in white asami imai voices chihaya dressed in blue Eriko Nakamura voices uh, Haruka dressed in red. Akiko voices Miki dressed in light green or fresh green as it's called in colorful days. Uh, Hiromi Hirata voices Makoto dressed in black. Naomi voicing Ritsuko dressed in green. Chiaki voicing Azusa dressed in purple. And Yumi dressed as. dressed as. voiced as. voice. jeez. voices Takane dressed in carmine as it's called. Okay, I got all that. This will be on the test, so I hope you all better study. Okay, then. So, uh, let me see. Everyone um, just sort of talks about what the event was like and how excited they are to be back together after so long. And just how happy they are to still be doing this. And everyone's very excited for this uh, this show to go underway. So, I won't waste any more time. We'll be having plenty of opportunities to talk with everyone as time goes on. So, let's go ahead and get things started. So the first song of the, the first official song of the evening, night, day, I don't know, the time zones were very difficult to figure out, was Sunny. This was being performed by Manami, Eriko, Asami, Chiaki, and Naomi. Uh, this song originated in the Idolmaster Vacation For You 2008 album. This is the third time it's ever appeared in concert, but this is the first time it's ever appeared with a specific group of people, so that's very exciting whenever, even if it's a song you previously heard recently, it could be... A completely different experience depending on who's singing it, so that's very, very fun. But there's no V pose? No, I'm sorry, Aki, she's not part of the original group, so um, unfortunately, there's no V posing here today. But we may see some peace signs here and there, and we could V pose in spirit. So then, uh, with this one, it was just like a very uh, upbeat happy song for like to get everyone energized for the road ahead and again like i said it was this concert took place in july so it was a very summer uh themed song it was just a very fun opening number and um something fun was that like with just everyone's interactions with one another there's a line in it in the song where uh someone's like trying to get another person's attention and then then the person is completely oblivious to it and they just go oh what's that over there and like so naomi and chiaki had that line in their verses and then like Naomi was trying to get Chiaki's attention then when she was oblivious to it uh Naomi just straight up does a full-on anime fall in the first sinking number it was totally scripted don't worry it was just like a very hilarious just amazing like just acting thing to Mahuzi <laughs> this is a great wording I know 
it was just very hilarious right off the bat just seeing her just over the top reactions and like something you also wouldn't see from Ritsuko all that often because Ritsuko's very strict and like by the book and everything but Naomi is just like full energy super happy and peppy and excited about everything so that was absolutely fun and speaking of fun up next we have Smile Taiso which was uh, the solo for Mayako every idol throughout this entire performance entire night for both days everyone gets at least one solo so that is very very fun and um, this one originated in Master Artist 2, it was an album from 2010, and it is one of Yayoi's image songs. For those who don't know, an image song is a song that is specifically designed to be performed only by one specific idol, so this song was entirely based around Yayoi's personality. And um, of course, Mayako captures that perfectly, as you would expect, because like throughout the entire thing, I could not stop smiling, like how could you not love this person? She is so <laughs> stinking cheery. She's the cutest person on the entire planet. She, like, perfectly encapsulates Yayoi's personality. Just, I could not stop beaming <laughs> every time I saw her, which I absolutely adored. It was just such a fun, happy experience from beginning to end. Like, she is just, like, she's wonderful. How could you, like, not have fun in this sort of environment, this sort of concert? It was just so, so wonderful. Absolutely loving it. And then uh, the audience, of course, is loving it too. Um, she's just having such a fun time interacting with them. Oh, yeah, something about the audience that I forgot to mention was, um, well, first of all, with the glow sticks, like I mentioned, um, whenever it's a specific solo performance, everyone changes their glow stick color to orange and like, or to a specific, whoever, the image color of the idol performing, is what I'm trying to say. Stop shooting beams, it's weird. It's a happy beam, it's fine. Oh my God. So, songs are audio, not visual, huh? What? Stun double not required. There's so many fun things happening in chat. Um, so yeah, everyone switches their uh, glow sticks to the image color of whichever idol is performing. But um, something else about this concert um, is that because of course it was taking place during the pandemic, usually the um, Idol Master concert stages, it's sort of like the the later ones we saw in Starlet Season, where like the stage was in the middle and we have like a whole auditorium surrounding the stage. But I guess they wanted to like have a somewhat limited. Uh, attendance with this one because of pandemic reasons so um, everyone as far as I was able to tell everyone was very very respectful of making sure everyone was uh, safe and healthy everyone was uh, required to be vaccinated before showing up to the concert everyone was masked and then also a rule that I wasn't expecting everyone it was required that people weren't allowed to cheer which is a little odd so like when um, a character, a character or a say you comes on stage for the first time, like they, or a song starts playing that you weren't expecting because the song list isn't revealed until like the day of. So, um, when a song starts playing, like you have an uh, initial reaction of the, oh, the, yeah, like you could have that. That was fine. Cause there are plenty of those where like people just like burst out in excitement for like a split second. But then like, other than that, it was completely silent. It was just like only clapping. And I was very impressed by that. Just seeing how everyone was very mature throughout the entire thing there wasn't any moments where like i heard any applause midway through a song or at the end of a song it was just like always clapping or always just like waving the glow sticks so um kudos to everyone who made this a very safe event for everyone so that was very very good uh let me see so i guess that's i think that's it for yayoi's uh solo performance up next we got it's sephiroth 1204 with a weekly update now it's <laughs> akiko hasegawa with a regular update um, this song originated in Master Artist 4. Master Artist 4 is going to be showing up a lot throughout this event. It was a, an album that released between 2020, a series of albums that released between 2020 and 2021. A lot of these songs are making their concert debut here, so of course it makes sense. They want to advertise like the new stuff that had come out, and um, it's just another thing that was originally supposed to be part of Idol Master's 15th anniversary before uh, plans got delayed a little bit. So, yeah, that was something exciting for me is that like, um, despite how much time I've spent with the Idolmaster, and like even with, if we're talking about just the original cast specifically, I don't often seek out every single solitary song the franchise has to offer because I would rather hear experience it throughout either like the the games that release or through the anime or something like that. So I um, a lot of the songs are like exclusive to either mobile games or to the CDs, like this one for example. I had never heard it before. So that was exciting for me, just getting like completely new experiences with the songs as a whole, not just like with seeing like new performances of them. So that was very, very fun. 
And something else to keep in mind throughout this entire thing with all the different songs that are exclusive to albums is that they don't, they've never had dance performances associated with them. And like, since this is the concert debut of this song, uh, think about all the work that went into just designing, uh, choreographing dance routines for every single one of these songs. It was, it's a whole lot more work than like you think about it. The more and more you think about it, just like, it just keeps on piling up everything that goes into these concerts. And it's not just like copy and pasted from all the games. Cause like even with uh, the dance routines that have, um, that originated in games that like already have pre-established routines like some of them get updated over time some of them get altered depending on like what uh, sort of group you have and everything like that so it's a lot of work that needs to get done so just uh, something that makes you really, really appreciative everyone also speaking of appreciate we got Hiromi <laughs> we got Hiromi Hirata uh, performing Jitensha which is of Makoto Image Song. It originated Master S in the Idol Master Master Special 5. Idol Master has very interesting naming conventions with all their CDs. It is a 2009 album. And this is a very, very popular concert song. Honestly, like with all the amazing. Uh, did I go through the set list yet? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm revealing it as I go along. I don't want to spoil all the different songs that are happening. So you'll hear about the songs as they go along because that's how it was for me as well. They didn't reveal the set list until. Uh, they appeared on stage, so that's how you discovered it. So, I feel like this is just a me problem, but uh, the way, like, considering how often I listen to Makoto songs, um, Jitenshin wasn't really a surprising song choice for me specifically, maybe it was for other people, but this is a very popular concert song, it uh, gets played a lot. Last time I had seen it in concert form, uh, I actually posted that when it was Makoto's birthday, um, Hiromi had, like, much longer hair in that segment as well, and then just, like, seeing, like, how different it was, how much she's changed, uh, for this performance, just, like, continues to have that Makoto energy, and I absolutely loved it, and it was just, it was fun to see, but it was just interesting that, like, um, I, I don't know, I was just expecting, like, some sort of big surprise with Hiromi's song choice, but then I came to the realization, like, oh, wait, I listen to Makoto every single day of my life, I listen to Makoto more than any other idols so like of course the song choice isn't gonna be surprising for me but yeah it was just very fun to like hear hear this song because like this was like one of the first concert songs i had ever heard from hiromi specifically so it's fun to see that make a return here and like just every time i listen to the song it's like such a high energy such a very fun song it's one that has like audience interaction so like being able to like usually the crowd's supposed to like cheer back with hiromi but they weren't allowed to do that for this concert so like first off i appreciate everyone who was respectful of that but they're also finding different ways to express themselves like uh making sure their applause was loud enough for um Hiromi to hear and everything and to uh play off of which is very fun um it was just very very a very fun high energy song throughout the entire thing just uh watching her have fun having the time of her life and um it just it was wonderful seeing how she's able to win over an entire crowd and that's just like not just the charm of Makoto, but the charm of Hiromi, and just, like, how she's just able to bring out the best in people and just, like, be fully confident in herself, and I absolutely love that. It just made me feel very, very happy, because, like, that's just, this is my comfort character. This is the character that just makes me feel more safe and more loved than any other character has ever been able to do. So, yeah, it was just a very, very fun time. And, um, I would very much recommend, like, if you're able to um find these songs elsewhere on your own time then please go ahead and look them up so hopefully um you can look back at the vod to see the names of all the songs and uh listen to them for yourself if you are interested so that'd be very very fun and yeah it just seemed like she has not lost an ounce of energy throughout any of these performances over the years she's just like absolutely amazing from beginning to end very very happy to have her here Okay, so after Makoto's performance, or Hiromi's performance, she's just like, yo, what up? I'm just gonna talk to y'all for a bit, because that's the power of Hiromi. She is able to just stop the concert. <laughs> no, it was like an MC segment that we're taking a break. So, uh, let me see. We're, I have like a little note section trying to find out uh, what to stop. Okay, yeah. So she calls everyone out. We have Manami, Azumi, Akiko, Chiaki, and Yumi joining her on stage, which is very, very fun. Uh, let's see. Hopefully in... Okay. Uh, so everyone joins here on me on stage and then, like, they start talking about just, like, how they're feeling and what, uh, how they've been enjoying, uh, the performances so far. And then it turns into a sort of, um, 
side game of sorts. So, uh, somebody goes ahead and brings out the super special surprise Sunridge colorful box, which has uh, several pieces of paper within it that have names of everyone on stage. So everyone is tasked to uh, pull out a specific name from the box at complete random, and whatever name they pull out, they have to compliment that person for, I believe it was 15 seconds. So it's on the spot. Uh, can the background music be a smidge more quiet? Yes, thank you for telling me. Go ahead and lower that. I apologize if it was hard to hear before. Uh, is that good? Let me know. We all good in the neighborhood. Talkie, talkie, talkie. Happy, pappy. Talkie, 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 talkie. Thumbs up. Okay, cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the Sunrich Colorful Happy Sunshine Box, it has everyone's names in it, and um, everyone was tasked to compliment the person, whoever, whichever name they pulled out, they had to compliment that person. So, you had to be like, on the spot, spontaneous positivity and kindness and happiness contest, which is very, very fun. So, let's see who everybody pulled. Let's see how fun this is going to be. So, first off, Yumi pulled Manami, and she was just, like, very embarrassed for herself. Maybe because, like, um... She, both Yumi and Manami came into this franchise around the same time because they both joined during Idol Master SP, so they got history with each other. So she was super embarrassed. The two of them uh, were very, are very close. And then um, she talks about like how much she appreciates her, and it gets to the point where she makes Manami super duper flustered, and it's just like very, very cute to watch. And then just like watching everyone be super nice to each other it was very, very fun. And um, it was just so, so happy to see like. Everyone's sharing their own personal stories, just like what they have to say about everyone. It was just like, it was very, very fun. But now the real star of the show, Chiaki, rolls in. <laughs> she uh, pulls Yumi's name. So as soon as Yumi gets done being uh, flustered for having to compliment Manami, uh, her name gets pulled and then she has to get complimented as well, which uh, just made her even more like, oh no. She <laughs> was just very, very excited. So. So then Chiaki starts complimenting her in a very Chiaki-esque fashion, which I'm sure you'll know what I mean later on. Um, but the real star of the show up next was Hiromi, and of course everyone, and I mean everyone in the audience and the chat and everything, everyone was wishing for one thing and one thing only, and that was for the ship to sail. And as fate would have it... The ship is sailed! We got Hiromi pulled Azumi's name. Everyone lost it. Everyone was so excited. Everyone was just thinking happy. Oh my god. So, of course, if you saw like the finale of Starlet with Makoto and Yukiho, you could understand like why I'm so excited for the for this pairing. So everyone was so excited. Azumi was ecstatic. She was so stinking happy. And it, everyone, like, sets up for the event. Like, Azumi is just, like, kneels in front of her. It's, like, as if a proposal is about to take place. So, like, I'm going to try my best to recount everything that was said. It's very off the cuff. And just, like, I apologize if I don't get every single detail correctly. I guess that's another thing. It's, like, take, take all the information I share in this event with a grain of salt. Because, like, I um, obviously don't know perfect Japanese. And, like, uh, the event was several months ago. So... Uh, apologies if I get some details wrong. I'm trying my best, though. But yeah, she gets ready to be complimented and serenaded by Hiromi. <laughs> she just looks deeply into her eyes. She t talks in, like, a super deep and beautiful voice and just, like, uh, just gets super up close and personal with her. And, like, Azumi is absolutely losing it. She's, like, squealing every time Hiromi speaks. Everyone's, like, fanning themselves with her favor because they just can't handle it. Hiromi's just, like, absolutely owning the entire moment. And it was just the most amazing, incredible thing ever. I was just, like, losing my stinking mind and how, how stinking hilarious it was and how beautiful it was. And just, oh my god, I could not stop smiling and laughing. It was insane. I was super, super happy. <laughs> as soon as time ran out, I was, I was just, like, like, happy crying on the floor. Just, like, completely losing it. And she's just, like, completely can't even believe everything that just happened just completely gone oh my god <laughs> she was so stinking happy and then here was just like yeah what up I, I know I'm the cool she was just like so stinking confident in herself and everything it was just it was amazing I couldn't I could not stinking 
Uh, thanks for adding the subtitles. Was he, it, uh, the subtitles you see on screen, yeah, though, that was added by me. So, uh, you're welcome, I guess. Um, yeah, that was just, like, such a fun thing. Just, like, it was everything I could have hoped for. Very, very happy to have that. So then, of course, everyone's hoping that Azumi also pulled Hiromi, but instead it was Akiko who pulled uh, Hiromi. So, um, she pulls her name and then she lives my uh, wildest dream of getting to compliment Hiromi Hirata live on stage in front of a live studio audience, which is absolutely amazing. And something about uh, Akiko's list of compliments, like I said, everyone had like 15 seconds to compliment everyone. And something about it was that Akiko was very, very precise in the length of how long she, how much stuff she had to say about Hiromi. It's almost as if she had practiced the entire thing. Like, as if that's something that people would do, would just rehearse things that they want to say to Hiromi about how wonderful and nice and beautiful and talented and cool she is. Or maybe that's just a me thing, who knows. But like, it was just amazing, like, as it was exactly 15 seconds, she was like perfect with it. And that was just very, very fun. <laughs> so, yeah, she was just very happy with how she was able to perfectly uh, fit that in with the 15 second time limit. And now the next one, oh boy. So, <laughs> then they drew which stage they will have to splat. And wait, it was the wrong one. <laughs> no, it was the wrong game, Nightshade. Oh no. I still don't even have that, my god. Hope y'all are having fun with that. Uh, let's see. The next one, though, the next one was the star of the show with Azumi. She pulls Chiaki, so she's got to start complimenting Chiaki, who is, like, let's just say that Chiaki takes full advantage of voicing the oldest character in the original cast, because she has a very, like, even though Azusa is very, like, she's very kind and innocent, and she uh, doesn't really acknowledge uh, some of the more fan servicey moments that she gets put in, Chiaki just sort of owns it, and it was to the point where uh, she was making sure that um, whatever Azumi would point out in terms of complimenting her, that all of those features were highlighted, I guess you could say. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this started. So, I'm gonna try my best, like, I try my best to, like, not have uh, two inappropriate screenshots shared throughout this, but basically Chucky was posing up a storm throughout this entire thing, would not stop moving, always posing in every different direction depending on what Azumi said, and like, this isn't a joke, the literal first thing that Azumi said when was coming up with compliments for Chucky, she immediately says that she has nice boobs, which the entire crowd started laughing over and everyone loved that, and she's just like, every time she mentions something on her, she like, makes sure that it gets highlighted, she poses for every individual thing, she talks about like, all of her... Uh, her uh, success as a model and everything about that. Talk about her legs and then just doing a bunch of leg poses. It was very, very extra. <laughs> very, very fun. And just like a completely different energy that you never see from Azusa specifically. But just Chiaki just completely owns it. <laughs> it's just like dancing and like posing up a storm the entire time. It was like the audience could not stop laughing. <laughs> Everyone was absolutely loving it. And, yeah, it was very, very hilarious. I could not stop laughing. I was just like, I couldn't even believe. I, I could believe. I can't even believe it was even happening. So, our final member for right now for this segment, uh, Manami Poles Akiko. And let's go ahead. And it's not nearly as funny. It was just more so like a very uh, personal, lighthearted thing. Talking about how she appreciate, appreciates her leadership. And she has, like, so much to say. She tries to get in within 15 seconds. It like, goes over a little bit. And, um, of course, like, since they were part of a unit when, um, Takane and Hibiki were added into Idol Master, so it makes sense that, like, they spent a lot of time together when they first started, so she just has a lot to say, and it was just very, very fun. Okay, hopefully I got some of that, so hopefully some of that was eligible in some fashion. So many Akis, I know. And, uh, so now that I was taken care of, everyone's got, uh, their compliments out of the way. And it's time to start the next segment of songs. And what better way to start the next segment than with... With Mayako just showing up and having a whistle. She just blows a whistle, which uh, activates the next song. I'm just like, okay, sure, Mayako, you can do whatever you want. So this next song is called... It's Slap Happy, performed by Asami, Asami Mayako, and Rie. Uh, Slap Happy originated in 2012. It 
was previously only sung by Mayako on stage. This is the first time it's been sung by both Asami and Rie, which is very fun. Just uh, give us new experiences as well. So then up next we got, uh, it was just a, oh boy, excuse me. It was, um, I appreciate the, like all these different combinations giving everyone different opportunities to shine. Because I know if I was in charge of it, I would like probably unconsciously go with like a lot of similar groups for every single song. But this allows me to see like different groups that I wouldn't personally think to uh, fuse together. So that was very fun. And everyone's expressions were great. Everyone was just like very high energy and everything. Just love seeing everyone interact with each other in the group songs and everything. It's just super fun to see. Just something that you can't really like, you wouldn't really see in, in person really. Like it's just a completely different experience from like what you would see in the games or anything like that. Because of course it's just like you see the real people behind it all. And it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, so up next, the next time I believe we got another solo. Yes, we got Koisuru Mikata. This was uh, Naomi's solo. It is a Ritsuko Image song from 2011, and it has not made an appearance in a live concert since the Idolmaster 6th anniversary concert. So this was a, this was a big stinking deal. Um, so something you may have noticed throughout the event is that seeing all the uh, some performances have backup dancers. Uh, if whenever we just need to have like more energy on the stage or just make it more of a spectacle and what I really love about uh, Naomi's backup dancer specifically is that they actually if we could slide to the next slide they actually every single one of them has glasses to match up with her because Ritsuko is the only one in the group who has glasses so that was very very fun just having everyone match with her and just like match her style and also everyone has flags that they're waving around just like making a big like marching band performance it was very very cool so that was cool and like also again just re-emphasizing or reiterating or whatever just how um how much this woman loves her job just everything about her just screams happiness with everything she does i'm just so happy for her and seeing how much she's just absolutely living the, the dream and just uh embracing the moment she's in it is impossible to dislike her no matter what you say or think about this entire franchise like you cannot dislike her she is absolutely incredible with everything she's accomplished and just how much she still loves being a part of this franchise and everything it was very very fun and just like also just seeing how different she is from Ritsuko and like also being able to finally like, express herself in ways that Ritsuko isn't really able to be either because Ritsuko spends a lot of time uh doing producing work or also because Ritsuko is like tries to be like the voice of reason in Idol Masters, so seeing her being able to let loose a little is just absolutely amazing and fun. And she just completely owns it. She's absolutely amazing. So that was just very fun to see. And up next we have uh, Mebuki no Toki, which was a Yukiho image song from Master Artist 4. This is its concert debut once again. And um, let me see. Um, it was just like a very Yukiho-esque song, like a very uh, soothing, peaceful song, and like it's just something that always makes me smile to see Azumi perform because she completely like encapsulates Yukiho and everything about her that I absolutely adore, and just seeing her uh, confidence shine through when she's singing a song that is really important to her, and just is able to always win everyone over. She's just super uh, kind and elegant, and just is able to bring out an emotion that. Uh, some other songs or some other idols aren't able to create so I was very happy about that and seeing uh, that be a part of this as well so uh, a lot of fun different ranges of songs which I appreciate <laughs> it was just a lot of uh, nice variety which I really really enjoyed but you know we can't have all happy pappy stuff all the time because if it's idol master then we need to have some sort of some level of mischief wouldn't you say this has been too happy for too long and now the mischief train has arrived on the scene <laughs> because it's time for Sexy Typhoon, which is a mommy image song because of course it is. It's from Master Artist 4. This is its concert debut. So I feel like Asami has a very unique uh, hurdle that she needs to cross whenever performing on stage because uh, she needs to encapsulate the energy of two separate characters as one and she is able to do that perfectly she just has like very great energy throughout the entire performance that's able to fill up the entire stage and also we have like background dancers who were able to make it a very fun and zany performance and we're just like all over the place make it a very like 
high energy stage that you would expect from like the youngest members of Namiko Pro. Um, it was just a super fun dance performance. The backup dancers, like I said, they're amazing. And uh, Asami, even though she's like working solo a lot of the time, she's able to just like capture the personality of the twins perfectly and is able to just have a super fun, happy time on the, on the stage. Even if the songs in question may not be uh, fitting for the character specifically, but for uh, the real life Seiyu, maybe it's a bit more appropriate. So it was just a very, very fun time. So then up next we have... We have Maji Day. This was a song that originated from the Idolmaster and Taiko collaboration from 2010. It was like the Idolmaster's 10th anniversary and Taiko's 15th anniversary, I believe. So we have a very Taiko-esque song. There's a power thirst because I've been talking for too long. Okay. I also need a new water bottle because I don't have one anymore because of reasons, which would probably be its own story in itself. So I won't go ahead and tell that right now. Yeah, Taiko's the drumming game. There are actually some... There's two Taiko games. Uh, Idolmaster Taiko games on the Vita, which is cool. And it's like the two of my three game Vita collection. So, it's like interesting, I guess. <laughs> uh, you better oil so much text, which is fine by itself. Huh? Uh, let me see. Okay, just catching up with the chat. Hopefully I didn't miss anything important. If I did, feel free to repeat it. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, this was like, again, another fitting summer song because it's just like a summer festival and whatnot. Um, it was, this is the concert debut of, of the song as well, even though it's been around since 2010. This is the first time it's been in a concert, which is really cool. Um, also, as you can see, everyone's got like new outfits for this one. They got like festival style attire, which is really, really cool. And everyone just had like the energy of like trying to make like a big, fun festival performance, which is very, very awesome. It was just a super high energy song. Everyone was just like bouncing all over the stage. As the kids say, it was an absolute bop. It was a very uh, fitting Taiko song. It was a very exhausting dance routine, I could tell, because it was just like uh, right after this is when they took another break. They were just like, give me like 10 hours. It's like, my God, this was it was like a very, very bouncy song for like the midway point. And it was just like uh, time for a break now. So. They whip out their fans, they start chatting and whatnot, and um, it's just nice to see that like even when uh, these performances get like super intense and high energy, they always have each other's backs and they're able to just like, um, they're able to support one another, make sure that like the show continues to be fun and exciting for everyone. So uh, break time with this group of people, uh, the two Asamis uh, join them on stage and they start uh hosting their little halftime show and of course now that they're on stage we gotta have the mystery box round two so another box uh shows up on the stage and we gotta start complimenting people uh let me see do not drum the vita I meant oil by drinking water is is that a whip no it's a fan i believe uh some of the outfits have been very chipper in a good way it's very nice so up next with the boxes, do you have any like wild and crazy speculations on who's gonna pull which name out of the box? Let me know in the comments below or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so let me see. I think we're going from right to left again, as uh, just like with last time. So first up, we got Asami. She pulls Naomi's name, and it's like Chiaki was doing very flirtatious poses as Azumi was. Uh complimenting her but in the case of asami complimenting naomi naomi decides to get in a sort of different pose she gets in a battle ready pose she does this pose that i absolutely love it she's just like <laughs> it's like she's ready to fight someone but now she like starts posing with the fans and everything she just like does this awesome dance as she's getting complimented and it was just absolutely hilarious and amazing just like all constant high energy and i absolutely loved it <laughs> it was very very fun Oh my god, it was very great. Uh, it was similar energy to Chiaki, but it was just like absolutely hilarious uh, throughout the entire time. Just how she's able to make everyone laugh and smile. It's just this group would not be what it is without her. She's like, I feel like she is what carries the entire show. It was just the constant positivity that she possesses. And it's just nothing short of admirable, which I absolutely love. Okay, so then. 
Uh, any idea if they sold those boxes out of the show? <laughs> I think I looked that up. I couldn't find anything. I'm like, where do I get this box? Where do I get the limited edition cardboard from the Idolmaster concert that probably got thrown out as soon as it was uh, done being used for the show? I have no idea. But up next, Rie pulls someone's name. What sort of name do you think she pulled to where it would result in her getting this sort of reaction from seeing the name? <laughs> Like, what the fruit? She just, like, screamed as soon as she saw it, and she slowly turns it around, and Rie pulled... Herself! <laughs> of course she did! Like, everyone started laughing, like, nobody is <laughs> thinking, considered, like, the possibility of somebody pulling their own stinking name out of the box. <laughs> and of course, like, even though it's, like, separate from the character, of course Yori's character would pull her own name because Yori wouldn't have it any other way of being able to compliment herself. So I couldn't, I couldn't even be mad. I was laughing my stinking butt off. It was so stinking fitting and hilarious. It was amazing. So then she had to, they forced her to compliment herself. And she was just like, what? No, I don't want to. She had to compliment herself and it was very, very stressful for the voice actress or she was just like i don't know what to talk about <laughs> she was just like she tried her best to talk about how grateful she is for where she is and all of her friends and all that stuff it was very very nice but she <laughs> was just like not expecting to have to compliment herself but you know what that means right if rie pulled herself that means somebody else might have also pulled themselves i guess there's only one way to find out so let's keep going see what happens up next is uh, I believe it was Naomi who's next. Naomi pulls, if we could go to the next slide. She pulls Mayakos. That's nice. Okay. So after I was done laughing my butt off at that. Um, so Mayako uh, starts complimenting, or Naomi starts complimenting Mayako. Talks about how uh, cute and cheerful she is and just makes her super duper happy. And it's just a nice wholesome moment after the hilarity that was Rie's uh, round. But now it's time for more hilarity, because we go over to Eriko, <laughs> and she's already losing it. I wonder who Eriko pulled, do you have any idea? Any guesses whatsoever? She also pulled herself! <laughs> how did this not happen at all in the first round? I was just like, how did we not, like, think this through or have this mistake happen? <laughs> so she pulls herself as well, and then she's forced to compliment herself. <laughs> She has to, um, so she starts talking about how much she loves Haruka and how she loves all of her friends. She more so just talk, makes it about all of her friends instead of about her. Talking about how grateful she is for everyone. And yeah, just a nice wholesome moment, but she like could not stop laughing. She's just like, God darn it, I did not want to pull myself. <laughs> it was just very, very funny. Oh my God, it was so stinking good. So the only ones that are left are Asami Imai and Mayako. Uh, they still have to compliment somebody. And the two cards that are out in the open, uh, they are the two Asami cards. So we have Asami Mai and Asami uh, Shimoda who are still out there. So there is a very real possibility that Asami Mai may also get stuck complimenting herself. It's all dependent on what Mayako's card says. So, what do you think Mayako drew? With that sort of reaction, whose name did she pull? <laughs> Mayako pulled... Asami... Imai! Hooray! So then Asami Imai doesn't have to compliment herself, yay! Because <laughs> she was like super worried about it, she's like, I can't do it, I can't do it! But then, but now if she has Imai's card, then that means Asami Imai has Shimoda's card. And as soon as she sees it, Asami Imai just stinking sprints out of here. <laughs> she just runs around the entire stage. It is the funniest thing ever because, like, you never see Chihaya that's excited about anything. But she, like, does a full lap around the entire stage just yelling, Yata! 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 She's just so excited that she doesn't have to compliment herself. Just running around the entire stage, super excited. She has like the golden ticket for the chocolate factory. It's so singing amazing, just running and sprinting everywhere. I've never seen Chihaya this excited in my entire life. <laughs> so she's just like super over the top, over the moon excited. But before she can even get back, as soon as she gets back to the group after celebrating, Naomi, in an act of betrayal, which is the only thing it can be referred to as, 
she steals Asami Imai's card and switches it with the one that Mayako had, which forces Asami Imai to compliment herself, and then she gives Mayako the Asami Shimoda card. And as soon as that happens, she's like, wait, no, 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 I don't want it, I don't want it. <laughs> you can't stop now, Omi. You can't say, you can't, like, refuse a demand from the boss herself. <laughs> so she just steals the card, forces her to compliment herself. She's just like, no, please stop, I can't, no, no, no. And then Mayako now has Asami Shimoda's card, hooray. <laughs> she just has to... Stinking, she has to sink and compliment another different person now. She's like, I'm gonna compliment an Asami regardless, I guess. So I guess I'm doing this one now. And the whole time, Asami Shimoda, she's just like, oh, Asami Mimai is just like completely dejected down here. She's just like, I can't do it. I don't want to compliment myself. <laughs> she was so excited now, it's all for naught just because Naomi broke the rules. <laughs> she just changed the rules right the last second for no reason. It was so singing hilarious, and Shimoda on the right, she's just like laughing the entire time and be like, I'm just happy I get to get complimented. <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens next. Oh my god, so Mayako compliments Asami, Shimoda, happy pappy fun times, yada yada yada. And then, of course, the best for last, Asami Mai, what, who do you think she has, guys? Who do you think she pulled? Who do you think, what character do you think she pulled out? She got... Herself! I can't believe it! How did this happen? <laughs> so she has to compliment herself now. Oh my god. So she tries her best. She like struggles a lot with like trying to come up with stuff to say. <laughs> Has a lot of pauses. Just trying to come up with something. Um, she gets some things in, but... Um, she just lets the timer run out eventually, and then it's just like, well, I did my best. <laughs> That's all I got. Oh my god, this was such a hilarious segment. I wasn't even thinking, or like, considering the fact that there might just be, like, chatting segments within the concert. I thought it was just gonna be, like, non-stop music from beginning to end. But, like, these hilarious moments that <laughs> I wasn't expecting. It was so stinking good. So now that everyone's been properly complimented and there have been no rules broken at any point, was it a, so was this genuinely coincidence or was it a stage? I'm 99.9999961% sure it was a coincidence. I don't think it was stage because like you see them pull the names out of the box. So like I'm pretty sure it was completely random. <laughs> and they just had to like compliment their friends and just like say something. So yeah, I think it was just all of them acting off of one another and like they all have great chemistry with each other as well. So it was just like, you have no idea what uh, they could end up saying, but like of course they'll always have something to say to each other, but they weren't expecting to pull themselves. I'm guessing that was just like the the hilarious part of it. That is a powerful, powerful percentage, a 99% chance. And speaking of 99, hashtag perfect segue, the next song is up and it, wow, voice crack. The next song is up and it's 99 nights with you, Robbie! And uh, we also have Azumi and Yumi. Uh, this song originated, this is one of my absolute favorite songs, my god. This is uh, originated in the Idolmaster 1 for All, which is uh, the last Idolmaster game on PS3. It released in 2014. This is the second time in concert, and it's the first time with these three specifically singing it. So, like, this is like the part of the concert where like people are a lot more comfortable with just like letting out a little applause when they hear a song. As soon as it starts, when you hear that first note, that first iconic note, you hear the wah as soon as you recognize the song. Like this was one for me, where I, like, I definitely know this song, and I was so excited. And of course, seeing like Hiromi and Azumi together, and just two of my favorite idols. And of course, after the exchange they had previously, having them sing a song together was perfect. And of course, Yumi's there as well. I'm not forgetting her. I'm not biased, I swear. So I just love seeing them sing together, and it was just such a great song. Like it's a song I have attachment to, it, so I was just super excited to hear it from them. And excited to see like the whole crowd's reaction, just the entire chat as well. The three me's, me, 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 me. <laughs> oh my god. So it was just very, very fun to reunite with the song. Cause I don't know, you guys may not believe me, but like I really do just take long breaks from the Idol Master. I usually did. Like it was based on what games were releasing. Cause I was always just like whenever a new game was announced and up to the game's release, I would just be like only focused on Idolmaster, but as soon as it released and then like I had my time with it, 
I just took a break from it. I didn't listen to the music. I didn't really think about it all that much. So then it was like it was like a big event when another Idolmaster thing happened. But with Starlet, that changed everything. So it was just like I have been on a non-stop Idolmaster hype train since 2020. And it's just been so stinking fun. But like this song I haven't heard in so long because it was from like One For All. And I just haven't been thinking about it recently. So it's just very, very fun to see. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got Hiromi Bias, because of course I have that. Hiromi was amazing, as usual, as you would expect. Then, oh boy, <laughs> up next is Velvet Quiet, which is a uh, Azusa image song. It is from Master Artist 4. This is its concert debut. It felt a lot more like a Chiyaki image song, though, than a Azusa image song. You saw a lot of poses and gestures that you wouldn't see Azusa do, specifically, but Chiyaki was just like taking full advantage of this being a live concert and just having a lot of, uh, shall we say, uh, flirtatious poses, I guess you could say. It was just a very, very fun song. She was just like, again, she's a very confident, uh, say you, very confident performer. And she has a very unique energy to her, which I absolutely loved. It was just absolutely hilarious. And then the backup dancers were also like, these are all the same backup dancers as well for like every single, um, there's like a group of, I believe there was 10 of them total, but like the same group of 10 gets brought in for all these different dance performances and they all like match each genre of music and dance performance perfectly. So they're able to keep up with every different performance, which is awesome. So that was very, very cool. Uh, let's see, so, oh, we have Darkness. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. So yeah, usually after a song happens, there's like a two or three second pause before the next song happens, but this one was a long pause. It was like a, it felt like a 10 second pause and like the zoom out shot where the entire theater is just gone. And people were just like, what, what is going on? Everyone was so confused. It was... Like, you have a feeling like something big is about to happen, but you can't possibly fathom within that exact moment what it is. But after a few seconds, the darkness becomes light. That massive window you saw in the background was actually a door. It's a door of light. It's the door to darkness being opened, Sora. No, <laughs> it's like the door of light opens up. And you see a woman emerging from the light, and everyone's trying to get an idea of who it could possibly be. And as soon as she makes her way onto the stage and everyone sees her, everybody loses their minds. I'll give y'all a couple seconds to figure out who this is while I continue to talk about her for a bit. As soon as she made her appearance, everyone in chat, everyone in the audience was just non-stop cheering. Everyone was so excited to see this person. She hadn't been announced to be a part of this concert. She just shows up and everyone is over the moon ecstatic. And as she's singing her song, she calls out to everyone. She calls everyone and then she calls out producer San. Which, as soon as I hear the phrase producer son, I just completely lose it because that's just a very precious title to me and a <laughs> precious title to anyone who plays Idol Master. Just hearing that is like a safe word. Just very, very happy and exciting. And just, it's a very emotional song that captures the hearts of everyone who's listening. And the entire time the chat is just going absolutely bonkers. It is so fun. This song was called Subasa and is performed by Juri Takita. Takita, I apologize for messing up the name. But it's okay, because I get another opportunity right after this song, because she's just like, yo, what up? I don't need breaks. I'm gonna sing another song right away. Um, she sings a song called Sora, which is also performed by Juri Takita. Did I get it right this time? Hopefully I did. So she starts singing once again, and we see the audience is switching their glow sticks. So her image color appears to be either a type of yellow or a type of green. Um, I think the official one is like a baby chick yellow is her image color, so I try to like have a golden font for the text. Uh, but also the color green. What sort of character would be associated with the color green? If you're thinking about it. So uh, we continue to hear her perform, which is absolutely amazing. 
she just has such an emotional look on her face like this is something that she's been longing to do for such a long time and that she just missed being in this environment and um you just see all, all that emotion come out all at once and just as she's wrapping up her song everyone else comes out as well and finishes it finishes the song with her and it is at this moment where i am finally able to happily introduce to you all Jiri Takita, the seiyu for Kotori Otonashi, Namiko Pro's secretary. With Jury's presence here, we now have all the members of Namiko Pro All Stars Plus. That is the name of the unit where it involves all the 13 members of 765 plus Kotori. Because those of you who know her uh, backstory, which I won't go into too much details of because in case you want to experience it for yourself. Uh, she had started out wanting to be an idol just like everyone else, and her journey eventually led to her meeting uh, President Takagi, who then formed Namiko Pro and created the Idol Master franchise. So, um, even though she has her like her current resting places as a secretary in Namiko Pro, she is still always going to be an idol at heart, and being able to see her perform is a very, very emotional moment, and just seeing her um, alongside everyone was, uh, it's a very monumentous occasion because I talked about how this is like the first time in like five and a half years that the original 12 members of Namiko Pro were all together in a concert. Jury's presence in this concert makes this the third time in the entire franchise history to have all the, the all of the Namiko Pro members plus Jury in attendance. The last time this ever happened was during their 7th anniversary, which was a decade ago. So, I hope you understand just how magical and how special this was to see, and like, when I finally realized it, it sort of lit a fire under my butt, just realizing how there aren't opportunities like this always available to see every single one of them perform, so... I needed to be able to support them at this moment. Also, I needed to make sure I saw it because who knows when the next concert's going to be and also who knows when the next concert with every single member in attendance is going to be. Oh my god. Uh, so she... Does she have to draw her own name because it's the only name... Uh, it's only her name left? What? What was the question? Oh, she has to... Oh yeah, because the complimenting thing. No, I think we're done with the compliments. <laughs> okay, I was like, wait, what, what are you talking about? Uh, basically, this is Organization 13, Sora. But yeah, this was just like such a big event. I was just so over the moon excited and happy to have her. And like, you don't realize what you're missing until it's gone. And like, once she comes back, it just realizes just she needed to be here all this time. And we were so happy to have her. Everyone talks about how how much they'd missed her and how um, much things have changed over the years. And Jerry talks about her history with the franchise as well and just introduces herself once again and just talks about everything. Um, and something else that she specifically mentioned, she's the first one to, uh, start bringing up the topic that there are producers who are viewing from all over the world. They make mention of this being the first time it's being broadcast outside of Japan. And then everyone in chat is just like, that's us, that's us, that's us, that's us. <laughs> so I'm glad that they acknowledged it. And I, I sincerely hope that the people who were putting this event together were watching because I'm sure it was just a drop in the bucket to them what the live stream tickets uh, provided them, but I really, really hope that we made some sort of an impact where they were paying attention to how many people are devoted to these seiyus and devoted to this franchise, because there's absolutely nothing else like it, and we absolutely need to uh, continue to support them as long as we can, because this wouldn't be possible without all of us working together. Uh, was the intro speech pre-recorded, or just her backstage? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to, like, at the beginning of the concert when everyone introduced themselves it was just like the main members of namiko pro and then jury was a secret oh yeah, the intro speech when it was like silhouettatory that was a pre-recording that was a pre-recording because like that also explains why we just saw a silhouette we didn't see an actual person there so uh yeah that was all what we were expecting to be kotori's appearance for this entire concert but no she wound up actually being here but does that mean president takagi's also here is he gonna show up on stage and sing as well eh, i don't think so that would have been amazing, though. 
Uh, so yeah, now that we're done with the complimenting game, we gotta come up with a new, uh, game of sorts. They talk about how they ran a poll, uh, before the concert, and they're going to be re revealing the results, um, through... They're gonna be revealing the results, uh, of the internet poll, but they also wanna hear from everyone in the audience what their opinion is, and this will be an opportunity for all of you to share your thoughts as well. So, here is the poll question. What do you like to eat during the summer? You have option A, shaved ice, and option B, watermelon. So hey, we actually do have a Splatfest going on here. This is like Splatoon. So yeah, we got we got contests, we got idols. It's just like Splatoon. How wonderful. So yeah, apparently they're going to show the results of like the online voting for this one. And they also want to just ask everyone in the audience what their opinion is. And then also everyone on stage has to hurry up and pick a side. But which side are they going to choose? Which one would you choose, audience? Would you choose shaved ice or would you choose watermelon? Let's see, chat says, A, the answer is watermelon flavored shaved ice. That's the harmony vote. Option B, shaved ice. Seems pretty split. So let's see what the Seiyus uh, decided upon as soon as they were told to like go to a specific side to vote. They all start running to where they want to go. And I, w I wish I had this specific screenshot, I unfortunately don't. The close-up of Eriko's face when she turns around, I don't have that unfortunately, but let me just say, the face she made when she turned around and saw that every single person except for Mayako was running to the shaved ice side, she was thinking devastated. It was just her and Mayako on Team Watermelon, everyone else was going to shaved ice. But then right at the last second, because Akiko sees that like she's the last one headed to Shaved Ice, she feels bad for them. So then she goes back over to Watermelon just to like even it out a little bit. <laughs> oh my god. She was absolutely crushed. She did not believe it. She was just like, how is everyone on Shaved Ice? I don't understand. Oh my god. So this is the entirety of Team Watermelon right here. Like if I was voting on this, I would also vote Watermelon. But Hiromi, if I was there in person, Hiromi's on Team Shaved Ice, so I want to go on Team Shaved Ice, obviously. Oh my god, I was, it was, it was not expected to be that split, and then, oh my god, it was just hilarious seeing like the reaction to it all. Uh, so yeah, as they're like trying to like come up with like the pluses and the minuses of watermelon and shaved ice, they're trying to like decide like trying to come up with better uh, defenses for their team or whatever. Uh, a last second betrayal takes place, and uh, as you can see, Naomi starts running over to Team Watermelon. She yells at the other two, she's like, I'm sorry! And then she switches over, just so she can make it more even, because she's always looking out for everyone. And now, Team Watermelon is a strong group of four. Now it's a lot more even, right? Maybe? Possibly? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but they're, they're just happy to have her. They're trying their best to uh, defend the honor of the watermelon. Meanwhile, Team Shaved Ice is just living it up. They're, I guess you could say they're chilling or something. I don't know. They're just having the time of their lives. They know they're winning. And everyone in the audience is um, also, um, they're switching their glow stick colors to show what team they're on. Uh, red for Team Shaved Ice, blue for... Uh, Team Watermelon, but those are not the votes being counted. The votes being counted for this one are uh, the ones that were done online and the... Whoa, hold on. Am I still live? I'm still live, right? My... I see a little... Okay, my little internet... My internet thing is like bouncing up and down as if I'm not live. Am I live? Okay, it was just... It's still dancing. I hope I'm live. Yes, yep, yeah, okay. I see it dancing. I don't know how long it's been dancing. I'll just have faith in the ethernet and try not to look at it. Okay, it stopped moving. Okay, are we good? Okay, it's still bouncing, but hopefully it's fine. Hopefully it's fine. Hopefully it's fine. Uh, where was I? The winner of the Idolmaster Splatfest, I guess we could call it, is... It's Team Shaved Ice with 71% of the votes. Watermelon only got 29%. And, uh, he, Eriko is just absolutely devastated. She thought she was going to win for sure, but, um, she is, uh, sort of accepting her losses now. 
and Shaved Ice is the victor. And of course it's the victor because it had Hiromi on the team and you can't lose when you have Hiromi. And I can't repeat everything that Hiromi said because this is a children's program, but she just dropped some sick disses and beats Yo on the other team for picking Team Watermelon. And as soon as she's, she got done talking, everyone just like exploded with laughter. And whatever she ended up saying, it resulted in getting this reaction out of Eriko. Just absolutely stunned <laughs> that, like, she got dissed so stinking hard for liking Watermelon. It was stinking amazing. Now, that's not a very, uh, sportsman-like behavior, wouldn't you say? Idolmaster is all about love and friendship and happiness and togetherness, so... Naomi starts listing off all the reasons that, like, both teams are, are good and, like, everyone should, like accept each other's interests and disinterests and likes and dislikes and as she's having this like nice little friendship speech about everyone getting along and, and respecting one another Eriko as you can see is just waltzing off to the other team hoping to not be noticed she tries to abandon her stinking team while stinking <laughs> Naomi is having a big emotional friendship speech she doesn't care about any of that she's just like I want to be on the winning team Oh my god, so she just abandons her team at the last second, and it was hilarious, just like, this is our fearless leader, and she abandons, like, her watermelon team just so she can be with the shaved ice team. It was stinking hilarious, but she gets caught, so she just stuck like this in the middle. <laughs> oh my god. And this was such a scandalous revelation from our leader that she actually had to post on Twitter that she does indeed like watermelon, and you can tell because she went ahead and shared a little picture little picture voice crack of her with a little watermelon and why the uh, tweet tweet words tweet header tweet phrase tagline what do you call words attached to a photo on twitter uh she said watermelon is delicious but i don't know i don't know she might have to uh be a bit more authentic from this point onward i don't know if we could forgive her for such a scandalous act i don't know but yeah that was absolutely hilarious that like she just straight up ditches her team as soon as she loses <laughs> she was just done with it but yeah she supposedly does like watermelon and she'll support them in the future but maybe not as strongly from this point onward okay back to music time now this one this one got a massive stinking reaction as soon as it started because, as you can see, we have Manami, Akiko, and Yumi, which make up the Project Fairy group, which was like the rival group from 961 when those characters were first introduced. And seeing them together is like always a big stinking event because they're just like some of the, like that was like the origin of rivals, essentially. It was just amazing to see that. So, uh, this song, Kiss, is not a tribute to Gene Simmons. It is a is from the 961 album, which originated in 2008. We haven't heard this song of uh, being performed since, or we haven't heard the three of them sing it together since this song was created in 2008. So it has been a long singing time since anyone heard this song. This like screams final boss energy, like even more than first call did in Starlet Season. It was just like such an intense and powerful song. Like I know about Overmaster already, but like. And that's like what was their main rival song, but this one just like works so much better as like a final boss theme. And it was just like such an intense moment for Idolmaster back then, and it was just insane seeing like a rival union like uh, Miki who deflected from Namiko Pro and like joined President Kuroi's agency instead. It was just like such an emotional, intense moment that like um, I'm glad we've moved on from, but like at the same time, we still love seeing all three these three members collaborate with one another and like it's also this moment where you like you remember just how much range they have because like when it's a more villainous song they have like much more intensity to their voices and it was just uh always great to hear like all the different uh levels of range that they all have and even though they like technically weren't part of like the original quote-unquote original cast uh with the arcade release uh nobody questions whether or not they're considered like true blue members of namico pro they of course are and they're like some of they're irreplaceable we are always happy to have them and they just absolutely nailed this performance it was very very fun and speaking of like intense songs we released the flames of heck onto the stage with this next one this is inferno this originated in the idolmaster master special 3 from 2009 
uh, this was uh, this is the first time we've uh, seen it being sung by both Asami and Azumi in a concert. So that was very, very fun. Oh my god. Defected, not deflected. I'm sorry, words are hard. I'm trying my best, but thanks for correcting me. <laughs> oh my god. It's a trap. The shaved ice... It's a shaved ice dressed as watermelon. Yeah, I was wondering, like, was there ice at the bottom of the cup so it was, like, technically shaved ice still? I don't know. Also, how do you make shaved ice? Do you, like, literally shave an ice cube? I don't know. So, like, I know crushed ice, but how do you shave an ice? I'd rather not think about it. Um, but yeah, there's no ice on this performance, though, because it's, like, a flaming hot stage. And, of course, like, uh, Asami, as you know, is, like, one of the most powerful voices in all of Idolmaster, so she is absolutely perfect for this song. And, like, being paired up with Yukiho, which was, uh, very interesting, but, like, this is what they're... They were the two ones who originally sung this song on a CD, so it was sort of designed around the two of them working together and that's sort of like what Yuki Ho's whole I guess gimmick is where like she does have a lot of power so that's it takes a long time for her to uh like develop the courage to use it properly so hearing Azumi sing this like it just has a very surprisingly powerful voice they wouldn't expect from Yuki Ho and um was, again this was another song that I had never heard before so it's just seeing another side of Yuki Ho that I'd never seen and it was just awesome and intense and it was very very cool there's also like a very very fast talking segment like you know when the like sometimes there's a certain vocaloid song that has like a super fast talking segment with miku uh that gets like circled around the internet from time to time and um that was it was sort of on par with that where like there was just like a super fast monologue part where somebody just like completely nails it perfectly and just like a super duper quick speak and speed just puts all of my kerbobble fobbled words that I try to barf out at all of you to shame and then like Azumi also follows it up with her own like super quick monologue as well it's just like absolutely incredible it's just like super engaging and cool and everything so that was very very fun and then up next what do we got we got Sonar this is Yori's image song from Master Artist 4 it's a concert debut and being performed solo by Rie Kugimiya. So, this is the part that I was excited to get to, so we're gonna like, uh, get a little more super serial for a little bit. Yeah, it was sort of like the, uh, like the scat man sort of thing. But, um, I wanted to get like a bit more personal and serious here for a second, because I'm sure like some people were expecting me to be like, just as hard on Rie as I am with Yori, and like, comparing her to Yori and all that jazz, but, um, I didn't want to do that because a i very much want to encourage the make sure people remember that voice actors are not their characters just because a real life human voice actor voices a character you don't like doesn't mean that there are a person they're a bad person in real life so you shouldn't treat someone a certain way based on like how your experience with their fictional counterpart was so i just didn't think that would be appropriate but also like, not only do I just have, like, nothing but respect for Rie the Seiyu, but I am completely and totally honest when I say that she was the reason I bought these tickets in the first place. She was the one that made the final decision for me. And I'll get into why that is. So, um, again, like I said, I don't have extensive knowledge of every single concert that has happened. I, don't, I haven't seen every single one of them or all the footage because, like, um, a, I'm not in Japan, and B, um, that footage, if it ever shows up on YouTube, it doesn't stay up there for long. So, um, I very seldomly get to experience a lot of the live performances. But one of the performances that I saw before this concert was one that was done by Rie, and it was the one that made the deciding factor that, like, I needed to be there to support these idols uh, during this moment, because... There was a song that she performed called Matane, which is another one of Yori's image songs. And it is a song about, uh, Matane is a phrase that means like, it's a bittersweet goodbye, but um, in the context of the song, um, it's, a, it's a goodbye that means like, I'll see you again soon. But in the context of the song, it means like that promise to see each other again was never fulfilled. So it's a very emotional song for her. But also, at the time that concert was happening, it was right at around the time where, like, the whole sort of Idolmaster 2 uh, fiasco 
controversy stuff was happening which a lot of characters didn't make a return because of scheduling conflicts so Yori, Ami, Ritsuko, and Azusa had very minor roles in Idol Master 2 and weren't able to be produced and were just like side characters more or less and people were very 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 upset about that and it was both the most successful Idol Master game but it was also like the most controversial Idol Master game when it released and people like made it loud and clear that they don't want any characters to be removed from this franchise and Rie was absolutely devastated because um, she wasn't expecting her career to take off in the way that it did uh, when uh, she booked the role of Iori. It was because of like of her also getting Alphonse in Full Metal Alchemist um, that sort of like skyrocketed her career to something that she never would have expected and that was something that uh, sort of prevented her from performing as Yori as often as she would have liked so when getting to be a part of that concert where she performed this song she was feeling a mix of emotions in which it was both gratitude for being there but also fear and uncertainty for not knowing what the future of Idolmaster was going to look like because there was it was up in the air on whether or not the franchise was going to get cancelled as a whole because of how difficult it was to assemble all the voice actors and how like Things were changing with like the renaissance of like mobile games and with love live and just um people's expectations of what they think idols to be like they thought that like they the seiyus were getting too old to perform as these characters and we didn't know how long this is going to happen so if you look up that video um it is on youtube currently if you're able to find the matane performance uh from rie she just completely breaks down crying and it is one of the most emotionally heartbreaking performances I've ever seen on a stage before. But just seeing how supportive the entire crowd was for her as soon as like she wasn't able to sing anymore, everyone was cheering for her, everyone was applauding her and like cheering her on and it uh, helped her power through to be able to sing again and finish the performance despite how overly like just consumed by emotions that she was in that moment so that was the moment that like cemented it for me that like I needed to be at this concert because I need to be able to support them this is an opportunity where I could directly support these people who have changed my life essentially and um it was just a very it was very very emotional for me just seeing like that side of her that I'd never seen before and then also just I was very grateful for this sort of community that it existed and being able to support uh, her in a time of need and I wanted to be able to do that as well so that's sort of why I went through with this and this is also a very like uh, it's not as emotional as the previous one but like just also you could hear like the emotion in her voice and like just sort of reinstating the fact that, like you're not promised tomorrow you're not promised every single uh, performance that you're able to uh, be given in life so just being able to see how she was doing well now in the modern day and just all the fears like even with just these past couple years of how terrifying it's been for everyone we there's was no guarantee that like we could have ever had a concert like this ever again because of what's been happening with the world and sorry i'm just i'm just rambling at this point but like it was just a very a very like i was taking the time to just appreciate the moment i was in and just being able to realize just how special this was not just for me but for all the people who wanted to create this event for everyone and just how difficult it was so i'm just happy that i got to be part of this and it was rie who made that decision for me that like made me realize just how special these events are and i'm very happy to have been a part of it so i just wanted to give special thanks for that okay so up next i apologize for that was sort of long just trying my best here uh Yes, I'm referring to the 918 incident. That's what it's officially referred to, if you want to like look more into it. But like, that's another story for another, another time. The main point is that we have recovered from it, so I'm very grateful for that. Okay. So, up next, now that uh, that emotional performance was over, it was very, very fun. Up next is Suki no Sakura, which was performed by Yumihara. This originated from the Petit Idolmaster album in 2014. It was like uh, meant as a collaboration with the a uh, Puchimas anime, I believe, or Puchimas manga, it was with something with that as well. Um, which I was expecting a very like uh, light-hearted, funny song because it's the chibi spin-off of Idolmaster, but um, not the case actually. The songs were actually just like regular um, 
I guess, regular run-of-the-mill Idol Master songs that could be associated with any album. It was just sort of also promoting another, like, genre of Idol Master that was getting developed at that time. So, as you would expect with uh, Takane Seiyu, it was an elegant-as-heck performance. First off, she has, like, a absolutely beautiful kimono that she's wearing uh, for this performance. And, like, we have the moon shining in the background. It was absolutely beautiful. And incredible and her singing voice her range is just insane i can't stop gushing about it because she was just so incredibly amazing like after hearing her speak uh regularly in conversation then hearing how much her voice changes when singing it was just so stinking cool and she was able to captivate the entire stage just everyone was just like in complete awe i think that was like the one time where the chat was just like not talking because everyone was just like so amazed at how like incredible she was so it was just like a very fun performance and of course like it's something that only Takane could provide so it was very very fun okay now up next is Hug performed by Manami Numakura uh, this is her image song from Master Artist 4 concert debut you heard it all before um, again it's another emotional song there's a lot of emotions happening right now in case you haven't noticed um, and I've just been realizing how much more and more I've been uh, becoming attached to Hibiki and just how much I've been appreciating her character more and more and that just became more and more true with um with this performance right here because uh, she's also someone who has like a lot of a uh, vocal range but also someone with a lot of emotional range because like just hearing about the stuff that the character had been through and um it's something that I had um I just didn't really take the time to appreciate when I had first discovered the character but um over time I'm just discovering everything that makes this character tick and it was just like it was really interesting and again I'm glad that I'm discovering these songs um in the way that I am because I'm able to like um have these experiences like I sort of don't feel right about just like listening to a CD of a song uh, for Idol Master specifically because so much of the enjoyment of Idol Master comes from the visual aspect as well so I wanted to be able to um see some sort of visual uh performance on top of that and see like how the character is feeling performing this song and having this live performance was something that cannot be replaced or replicated in any other form of media so it was just very very lovely and just made me absolutely super happy so yeah that was just a very very wonderful beautiful song that i was very happy to hear for the first time and share that experience with all those other people okay and up next we got uh this song is if we could flip over we're here already oh my god what okay this is warate this is uh eriko's image song it originated um from master special idol master master special spring in 2010 uh we haven't heard her perform the song since 2015 and um looks like they're uh saving the two uh, original members of Idol Master for the very end, so the only solos left are Asami and Eriko. And with Eriko, it is a very, uh, it's a very emotional piece. Again, like just keeping that tone, that tune, with emotion uh, being the main focus for a lot of these performances. And something that I just noticed, like, again, she's the first Idol Master character, so she has seen this entire franchise evolve, evolve from the very beginning, and you could see like so many. I don't know how I could word this specifically but like you could see so many stories being told in her eyes just like of her looking back on everything that she's been through and just uh being immensely grateful for uh, the moment that she's in right now and that was just like so interesting to see that like once you had realized that like she's been created she was the one who that like pioneered this entire thing from the beginning and just seeing where she is now was just like so incredible to see and seeing that everything that she does for uh, this entire franchise and seeing all the people that are still here supporting her even though Idol Master has continued to evolve in so many different ways and then there are all these different branches now that like don't even have the original cast in them so people may not even have attachment to Eriko specifically but it was just so incredible to see that like there's nothing that could replace her and she was just like absolutely wonderful and she was she felt very very loved in that moment and something that was interesting like right at the end of the song she mouths something to the audience but like it's not into the mic so we don't know what it is specifically 
I tried looking at other times she's performed this song to see if like it was the same thing and it wasn't. So like she has a specific message that she gives out to the audience every time she performs this song, but it's different every time. And like obviously I don't uh, know Japanese, so I can't possibly predict what she was saying specifically. If I had to take a guess, maybe it would be something like maybe something like thank you or I promise I'll be back again or something but it was just like very it was very interesting to see that like she like there's just so much going on in her head right now just whatever she's thinking and um, I'm just very very grateful for that and just happy that she's here still and that she's still uh, creating all these wonderful memories with everyone oh boy so yeah it's uh, left as a mystery I suppose and with that, we only have one more solo for day one. Uh, I love how this pose right here of Eriko uh, waving as Asami shows up and uh, welcoming her on stage and everything because the two of them, they were the only two that were part of the very first Idolmaster concert, quote unquote concert. It was just like in a little conference room be like, hey, we're going to make this little game called the Idolmaster. Are you excited? I hope you support it. And these were the two that started it all. So seeing them together was just very, very exciting. And throughout the entire thing, I'm just thinking to myself, there is, if I had to pick one song that I wanted to hear at an Idolmaster concert, it would be Yakusoku, which is a Chihaya song, and it has very strong importance to the anime, that's where it originated from, so if you haven't heard it, I would recommend experiencing it through the anime instead of just looking it up. But, like, as soon as I mentioned that in chat, everyone was losing, be like, oh my god, if they play Yakusoku, I will lose it, I will, I'm not ready for that and Asami was the last one to perform and the song she played was not Yakusoku <laughs> okay so it didn't end up happening but like like I said um no there's no such thing as a bad Asami performance I adore like all of her performances but um I would very much like to if I ever do attend an Idol Master concert in person like I feel like that would be the more appropriate setting to have to see that performance live and see it for the first time that'll be a lot more personal and special to me so hopefully if and when that day comes then i'll be able to uh witness that but uh right now we have a uh, coming smile which is uh, her image song from master artist 4 it's a concert debut and it is a very chihaya-esque song as you would expect from her like a lot of the songs that come from chihaya before yakusoku are very very emotional pieces talk like talking about like her own inner turmoil and just expressing herself like for the first time and um a lot of the songs that come out after yakusoku are the songs about her recovery and everything that she's been able to accomplish now that she's uh been set free essentially from uh the pain that she's uh that she endured in the past and this was a song that like embodied that perfectly it was a song about recovery and about chihaya's growth and it hit very differently i'll say uh, considering like the pandemic and considering just like, everything that I've personally been through and it was just like it was a song for like anyone even though it was like specifically for like this character and also for like whatever had Asami had gone through recently it was and also considering like the master artist album that this was a part of this was made during the pandemic so I feel like that also was an influence on it so it was just a very it was what people needed to hear right now I feel like it was a song that was shaped and influenced by both how the Seiyus have changed, how the characters have changed, but also by how the world has changed, and um, it was just a very beautiful performance. And of course, like you could expect me to be bawling my stinking eyes out the entire time. Uh, I was just crying from beginning to end, <laughs> and everyone just absolutely loved it. I just loved seeing her perform and saving her for last. I thought that was perfect. So, with that though, we are done with everyone's solos for day one. So, everyone. Uh, heads out here and uh, talks about the experience they all just had. They um, say that they only have one more song for everyone though. And this is another song I've never heard before and it's a song that has never been performed by everyone together. It's a concert debut song. It is New Me Continued. This is from Master Artist 4 as well. But the way that it's distributed on all the different Master Artist 4 CDs is that you have a different idol singing it every single time. So it's always just an idol solo song, depending on which CD you get. But this time it was 
um, it was performed by all the members of Namiko Pro, so that was a very that was a very exciting thing to witness. And this was probably the song that broke me the most. It was a very, very emotional song. It was a uh, very fitting as like a farewell goodbye song. And I just I did not want to leave. I did not want to say goodbye to any of them at this moment after everything that we just experienced together. So it was just a very beautiful song. Everyone was like in perfect harmony. Everyone had their own individual solos, which was great. And like there was like a marching segment as well, where you could hear every one of them marching as this song is going on. And it was just like they were all in perfect sync with one another. And it was just incredible to behold. Just was a very perfect finale for this wonderful experience. And once the song had reached its conclusion and once like the entire crowd was like left in emotional distraught over just how beautiful and incredible this performance was that's sort of it they all just sort of do their bows they wave goodbye and they exit the stage and that's it it's over go home Okay, so there may be a way to get them to come back out for uh, one more performance, but you know what you gotta do at the end of a concert, right? You gotta start chanting encore. Well, we weren't allowed to say encore specifically because couldn't speak during the performance. Um, so people were just clapping, hoping that would be loud enough to uh, bring them back out for one more song. And everyone in chat was even typing encore, hoping that would uh, reach out to them as well oh my god like the I didn't even thought about this but like the idea of like them having the live stream chat in the back like the backstage or whatever that would be incredible like I didn't even consider that they might have been watching that chat uh, while it was happening so um, yeah everyone just keeps clapping this goes on for like five minutes or something and eventually the clapping is enough to summon President Takagi hooray who's been apparently standing out in the sunflower field this entire time. It's now nighttime, like he's been there all day, in a suit, presumably. So he just uh, talks about how great this uh, night has been, and he talks about the... Uh, he announces some new merchandise that you probably can't get anymore, some upcoming events that have already passed, yada yada yada. Just announces some stuff, and then he welcomes everyone back onto the stage for one more encore. Because as you know, in Idolmaster Land, it's never actually over. So everyone comes back out, and of course, like I said, this was a, meant to celebrate Idolmaster's 15th anniversary, so what better song to perform for it than Nando Demo Warao, which was the song that was created specifically for Idolmaster's 15th anniversary. Originally, this song was only sung by the main three members of every branch of Idolmaster, and then in Starlit Season, we uh, had opportunities to have uh, every member of Namiko Pro plus Albinoct were able to perform this song as well, but not all together. So this is the first time I believe that we are hearing all of the members of Namiko Pro plus Juri, who's in the background representing Kotori. Uh, she is also part of this and this is the first time we're hearing all of them sing this song together. So it was just a very special event. This song has been like a very like strong emotional support song for me throughout the pandemic I just like have absolutely fallen in love with it I've listened to it way too many singing times and I just never get tired of it I absolutely loved it and hearing it sung together by all of them it was just very very incredible and special just finally getting to see them celebrate their franchise like they had wanted to do for so long and being able to have this big event and everything it made everyone as the board in the back sounds made everyone smile it was just non-stop smiling from beginning to end everyone was so incredibly happy and it was just a very joyous occasion everyone was just absolutely in perfect harmony everyone was just having the time of their lives just living in that moment it was very very wonderful and it just sort of reinstated just how much the idol master has helped me during the pandemic and how much all of you have helped me during the pandemic so it was just like a perfect farewell songs of just being like thank you for everything and 
Thank you for making this dream a reality. And then they all do their poses that they do, like the silhouette poses, which I absolutely loved. Oh my god, it was amazing. Oh my god. And then it was just so stinking good. Everyone was cheering, everyone was waving and everything. Then right at the end, uh, Eric goes saying everyone together as everyone like starts to wave and clap and everything. And with that, that brings us to an end for this uh, first day, I believe. So yeah, at this point, all the say you start saying their goodbyes, talking about how great this event was and everything. Everyone is just giving special thanks and talking about how they're excited for tomorrow as well. So it's not quite the end yet. We're about the halfway point. Doing great so far. Um, everyone's talking about getting ready for tomorrow. Everyone's excited. Uh, just a lot of emotional pieces from everyone talking about like how long it's been since they've got to be together with everyone and how much this event has meant. It was just everyone had like the same universal thought from beginning to end of just how happy everyone was of just being able to be together and being able to celebrate the franchise we all adore and being able to celebrate with the people we all adore. It was just there was not a dry eye in the house or in the midnight studio, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Everyone was very happy. Naomi just completely owning the entire stadium. She uh, gives someone else her microphone and then she just yells at the top of her lungs, everyone I love you and it's loud enough to where everyone is able to hear it and that's just amazing. Oh my god, she was just absolutely amazing from beginning to end. Asami makes special mention of the people watching online, which I absolutely loved. It made me feel like, made me feel very happy that I was actually there in person, well not in person, but there, it, like, seeing it happen, like, as it was live. So that was very great. And then, it was just, it was incredible. I don't know, it was just, like, I was very, very happy to hear everyone talking about this and I really hope they're listening. I hope that they're listening and, and acknowledging the fact that like there are people outside of Japan wanting to see them, wanting to hear them. So I hope we get to see them again. I hope we're able to continue doing this forever if it's possible. And the crowd gives an applause to every single one of them, of course. And then right as they're about to say goodbye, uh, you have a studio? No, it's just like what I call Midnight and Beyond HQ Headquarters Incorporated. Just for funnies. Just for hee hee ha ha's. Um, just for the one last performance. Uh, because of course Idolmaster never has. It's never over when you think it's over. We always gotta have like 20 different encores and finales. And I only have one question for all of you. Are you. hesitation ready <laughs> are you hesitation no are you ready the final song of day one is ready which is the main theme of the idol master anime you all know this song you know where it comes from i don't need to give you an explanation on this one could absolutely never get tired of this song i don't i think this might be the first time uh all of the members of namiko pro plus are uh, performing this song that uh, so that's an incredibly special event as well. Uh, everyone was just having the time of their lives. Everyone was smiling. <laughs> just like so incredibly grateful to be in that moment. Like it's a perfect finale song. Also like I like how they save it for the finale. Because like it's a song about getting ready. So it's like saying that this isn't actually the end. Even though it's the end of today. It's not the end of this entire event. Because we still got more to do. So it was very very exciting. Everyone was just a smile on everyone's face. And everyone was so excited. Hiromi does a cute little pose right here and made me super happy. Oh my god, it was just so great. And of course, we finish off with Watashi number one. Just like you could hear the songs with like all these images, you could hear the performances and like hear the energy. Uh, special thanks to the backup dancers. I'm glad that they got a standing ovation right at the end. They got to take their bows. That was great. And, of course, special thanks to Jury for making an appearance and making this as special as it was. Like, because this group is truly not complete without her. Very happy to have her. And special thanks to everyone who continues to support the Idol Master after all these years. And it's a V-Pose sort of, Aki! We sort of got the V-Pose in the form of a peace sign. Oh my god. 
So yeah, with that final performance out of the way, they take their bow, and we'll see you tomorrow for the second part of this uh, concert extravaganza. But yeah, that's it for now. They go ahead and wave goodbye as they exit the stage, and it's a much cheerier farewell now that we were able to have one last goodbye with them. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's the halfway point. I guess we could like talk about reflections of stuff. For a second, I thought you were going to end the stream and talk about day two tomorrow. <laughs> do you even know who I am? I don't do split streams. I don't have day twos of streams. What is this? What 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 do we do? Only two hours? That's not nearly enough for a midnight stream. No, we're only at the halfway point. Doing great so far. We what's all this we stuff? I'm doing all the hard work. Break time's over. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, we are going to be jumping right into day two. I just want to like check in with all of you, see how you're doing, any questions you have about anything. Uh yeah, I'm just also I'm very glad that. I so far haven't gotten any notifications that the stream went down in terms of like internet or in terms of copyright because I really wasn't sure what was going to happen when I started doing this because like I don't know what the copyright law is specifically with like showing still images of things because like the concert's not available to view anywhere right now. They usually release the concerts on Blu-rays or DVDs or whatever later. Uh, that hasn't happened yet but I imagine that might be available for people who missed it or for people who just want to have a keepsake of it. So that'll be nice if that ever releases. It was actually just just earlier today, a few hours ago, they released on their uh, the Idolmaster YouTube channel. They released a stinking uh, like a little small compilation of some of the songs, like the opening and the closing of all of their of the day one and day two. So I was like a little worried that like that was going to like affect things in some way, but. Um, so far, I haven't had any problems, and like, hopefully, there won't be any problems when I try uploading it to YouTube. But if there is, uh, I'll at least have it downloaded so I could like try and get it uploaded somewhere. Hoy, oh boy, a lot of talking. I have not had this happy of a time in a very long time. Like, there was definitely like a void that was created once Starlet ended. And I'm just happy to be back with all of you and talking with everyone, even though I there was some very much some much needed things that needed to get done outside of YouTube and outside of the internet. And I still need to focus on that still, but I'm very happy to just be able to chat with all of you. Oh my god, uh, my thoughts on the Million Life anime announcement. I'm very excited for it. I'm interested in the choice to make it entirely CG. Because I do think the CG in Idolmaster is very good. It's just that, could they maintain that level of quality for an entire show for every episode? I don't know. So, I just need to see more of it. But I am very excited for it. I'm also excited to see like how it ties in with Namiko Pro, because like the Million Live Girls are part of Namiko Pro technically, so are we going to see the original members? Are we going to see the original producer? I have no idea. Pokemon Center just tossed a curveball to you. What'd they do? Did they tell you that a uh, special edition Pokemon is only available at GameStop and they only have three cards to give away for every person that shows up and it's already sold out and you're not going to be able to get that limited edition Pokemon anymore because they didn't think things through? Uh... Pokemon Center Bear Walker Haunt or Skateboard? Uh, how am I supposed to resist this? Uh, do you know how to skate? That might be a deciding factor. I don't know how to skate, but this is a cool skateboard. I also, like, I had some impulse purchases recently with the Yeti. I usually don't buy stuff from the Yeti, even though they got really cool stuff. I do regret some missing out on some things in the past, but... Uh, I wound up buying two shirts from the Yeti this month, uh, because it's spooky season, so we got, like... A lot of cool ghost shirts, and there's a Brook shirt right now on there, uh, which I absolutely needed to get. I was like, okay, fine, I need a Brook shirt. Uh, you, nope, you don't know how to skate. Okay, so that might be a deciding factor. Pokemon Company really loves their Halloween. Yes, indeed. Also, hello, Jacket. Welcome to the stream. <sighs> or have you been here all this whole time and I didn't see it? I apologize. Uh, let me see. Looking through the stream. Yes, you were here, I apologize, you were here, I, I acknowledge you, I noticed you, senpai, I promise. Okay. They're also selling ugly Christmas sweaters, perfect. Just perfect. Just for the meme. Okay. I think we could get started with day two if y'all are ready. If you have any, like, last second questions, let me know. Let 
Like, I was really worried about how this whole thing was going to work, like, with also just talking in general, because I remember I actually tried... Ready was the end of day one, tee hee hee. <laughs> when, um, I originally tried to do the tier list video as a video instead of a stream, and I recorded the entire thing, I just never uploaded it, because I don't know why, I just had a lot of trouble breathing that day. I don't know if it was just, like, with the day, or just, like, the miscomfort of, like, not having an audience to talk to, or not playing a game consciously, just talking to a screen. And when I tried it again with the live stream format, it was so much more better. It was so much more better. So much better. It was a lot more comfortable. I felt a lot happier in that moment. And I am very happy with how that turned out. And like with this one, I'm not playing a game at all. I just have it as background music. Um, so um, that was the thing where I was a little concerned about. Um, would it just be difficult for me to speak? And I apologize. Like, I know I, like, I tend to go on tangents. I tend to like go... Uh, back and forth between a million topics so I don't know there are times where I'm genuinely like worried that like no one actually understands anything I'm saying everyone's just humoring me being like mm -hmm, yeah uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah and like not actually knowing what I'm saying so like it means a lot honestly whenever I have any sort of interaction with people when people just humor me and just hear what I have to say and just let me speak and also want to speak to me it just means a lot to me <sighs> so yeah just wanted to uh, give thanks for that. Uh, speaking of background music, any other song we could change it to? We could. Uh, we could go into. Um, I imagine you don't want the stage for you background music. The do 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 because it's a very short song. It'll get very repetitive very quickly. We could go to like the uh, the office theme. Like I said, I'm trying to put this on YouTube, so I don't want to go into. Um, I don't want to go into um, hear any lyrical songs because I want to avoid copyright. Uh, let me see. Where would be a good song? Or a good song? A good place to go. God, I don't remember where any of these save files are located. Uh, let's try this one. Wait, what? Oh. Wait, what? Hold on. Uh, let me see. What is this going to ask me? I mean, yes, but like, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, hold on, um, mm. this won't mess anything up, right? I can't say what I'm seeing, because it's a spoiler for something, oh, because specifics, god darn it, uh, no, okay, uh, yeah, that was something. I can't even mention what I just saw. Uh, maybe we can't see any different songs right now. Uh, let me see. What can I do? Uh, let me see. Uh, this is the game. Yeah, it would make following your speech more complicated. Anyhow. It's obvious because the song is internal loop without a start or an end. Okay, yeah, with the, the music right now. Um, if y'all are okay with me continuing with this song, I think it would just be easier. There's like, just... I'm not sure which save file I'm supposed to click, and I don't want to mess anything up with, like, the save files. I'd have to, like, go back and look at specific things to make sure I don't mess certain things up, so... Um, I think we're good, because, like, the... What did you witness? You can't handle the truth. Um... Well, so, like, the tierless stream also had, like, a song, a, a consistent song throughout, so I think this one's fine. Alright, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, then. Day two of this this thing the idol master concert extravaganza so after the live concert happened it was like a few days or weeks later where um they released an archived version for people who missed the stream who bought a ticket it was only available to people who bought tickets but like there was an archive stream you could watch and it had some like different camera angles it had um a little different views in case like just making a, a nicely edited thing together in case there was any like sort of uh, lame looking camera angles on stage I guess or camera shots but also there was this little intro bit oh wait we have one more laughing goodbye picture okay we have that and then this so I cut this out of the first one because I don't want to spoil like in case anyone went into the stream thinking that it wasn't going to be an in-person concert um, I just want to make sure we didn't spoil that but um 
there was a little intro bit that it was added of all of them backstage and they were doing the circle that you do before a concert because you can't have a concert without a circle up moment so uh, Eriko leads the charge and she says the famous phrase Namiko Pro fight on that was horribly timed I apologize but yeah everyone uh cheers and then everyone uh walks out of the room you get to see everyone head to the stage it's super great i loved it it's very 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 fun and then they fought each other <laughs> no oh my god and then sakurai showed up it was like the last surviving member can join super smash brothers and then everyone just fainted at the sheer presence of hiromi hirata okay so day two begins we have the first one of the night being idle heart which i absolutely loved if you remember, Idle Heart was the final song of Starlit Season. It's the song that we heard in the final stream of it, the final DLC episode. And again, I love that they have this as the first song because it makes it feel like that Idle Master is going to continue. Because if they just had this as the last song of this concert, then that, that would sort of give off the feeling that we'll never hear new songs from them again. But this is like sort of taking us back to that moment of the game where it's just like, yes, that was a that was the end of that chapter of the idol master but now it's time for a new beginning which i really really love so that was just a very great song to open up with and then of course like everyone um we heard them all sing it together in the game when we were on the totally not reused starlit uh sky stage but it was just in the water but it was just so much cooler to see it in person of course i love that um just seeing everyone perform it as well and um, seeing a dance performance performed on stage for the first time. It's a concert debut, obviously, because the song just got created. Um, and also, this is the first time hearing the full version of it. Full versions of songs are called master versions, because, like, in the games, you have the songs are all usually around, like, two to two and a half minutes long for, like, gameplay purposes. But then when you hear it on an album, it's, like, more of a four and a half to five minute song for, like, the full version. Uh, so you get to, I got to hear, like, verses from the song that I had never heard before that were only available on CDs previously. So that was very, very fun. And then, of course, Hiromi Bias is Hiromi Bias. Very happy to see her, as usual. And, I don't know, like, I'm happy that Hiromi is super confident and, like, just is able to own the stage in every environment. But, like, I'm also thinking about Makoto and, like, what she would want for this performance. And Hiromi's the only one who doesn't get to wear a skirt for this entire event. And I remember just, like, thinking to myself, I was like, LET MAKOTO WEAR A SKIRT, YOU COWARDS! Hey. I know, like, Hiromi more so just, like, owns the look, and then, whereas with Makoto, she wants to, like, change it to, like, the more girly look, but... Oh well, I was hoping that, like, for the two different days, we'd have, like, one with pants and one with a dress or something like that, so... Unfortunately, we didn't get that, but we do have some slight alterations in... You thinking about Makoto? No. <laughs> no, we have some slight alterations in some people's appearances, which you might notice in the background if you see right there. But yeah, Idle Heart is uh, concluded, and now it's time for the introductions once again. Don't worry, I'm not actually going to go through the introductions all over again. There are just two in particular that I want to point out specifically uh, because uh, I want to go ahead and uh, show that off. Everyone's excited for day two. Everyone's very excited. But... Uh, two people specifically. First off, Rie, who has a new twin tail hairstyle for day two, which I absolutely love. Looks super duper adorable. And I just thought it was worth celebrating, making mention of. But then also, just as predicted, we see that Asami Shimoda switched her hair to the other side to represent Ami this time. And everyone was excited to be like, I guessed it. I knew it. I saw it. It was amazing. Oh my god. Oh yeah, something else about this, uh this event that I didn't know about like when I was talking with the chat before the concert started I didn't know this I didn't see any information about this anywhere on the internet but um the internet did you know the internet it exists um the apparently this concert was not only being live streamed but it was also playing in certain theaters question mark I think like there were because there are a lot of California producers in the chat and like apparently there was one theater somewhere in California that was playing this concert or this live stream and like if I had known that you bet your biscuits I would have gone there <laughs> and like no matter how far away it is because like California is obviously not a small state I would have absolutely gone to see this and 
a theater setting and like everyone was talking about like wow if we had known like this many california producers were here we might have like actually like gone to this event in a theater that would have been cool to meet up like i have no idea where it was i don't think it was anywhere near me so uh it's not like something i could have just like up and went to so yeah that was just interesting i had no idea it was playing in theaters of all things but that would have been a really cool experience to witness it like that as well also i've never heard of that a live stream being shown off in a movie theater I've never heard of that before i guess like it makes sense i suppose okay uh so yeah uh everyone uh we get, like half the members go backstage get ready to perform but then we have a little mc moment right here where everyone's uh just chatting it up i guess so what sort of fun zany events do we have planned for today uh, so everyone's talking about how it's super hot lately and how uh, they're trying to stay cool because it's summertime and a lot of them have been talking about like what their summer has been like and um, other things that they want to do. Uh, they already have fans out, they're just trying to like keep cool before the performance even starts. So I have no idea how like what the temperature was like in Japan at the time or even in that theater but um, yeah just like trying to stay cool of course. A lot of them were talking about the wine. They really wanted to have towels. I remember that being like a, a hot topic. <laughs> a hot topic? A hot topic for, throughout the entire intro part there. We're talking about the, like, yeah, the fans are nice, but we just want a nice towel. I'm like Earthbound, I guess. So yeah, that was that. And then, I wish I had the context for this image. I don't remember what they were talking about or why they were doing this. But they were doing this for some reason. And it made me laugh a lot. <laughs> it's in like... The expression on Asami's face was just really, really great. I'm just like, I'm not sure what's going on here. Like, Manami was like trying to teach them something, like some sort of pose or something that she heard of recently that she saw and then everyone started doing it and everyone was laughing. But yeah, that was interesting. I just wanted to share that. And now it is uh, time to get on with the show. Hooray. So then we're going to, uh, let's see what we're going to start with. Our first song is Ramune Iro Seishun, performed by Naomi, Rie, Hiromi, Akiko, and Yumi. This song originated from the 2014 Idolmaster movie, right out of the gate. Like, everyone immediately applauded and, like, they cheered as soon as they heard it. Um, the Idolmaster movie was in 2014, and this is the first concert appearance of this song with this combination of singers, which is very, very fun. And then, um, we had a lot of emotional pieces right at the end of, um the of uh, the day one performance so this one has like a lot more upbeat summery type songs uh i guess trying to get people in the, in the mood for summer even though it's like july i don't know depends on what your definition of the start and the end of certain seasons are i always just like i know there are official dates for those but i always just like say i don't know the start of june is the start of summer because june july august is summertime so that is um they're doing the heart sign with their fingers oh that's what they were doing okay it was very popular in K-pop culture. Okay. I'm glad I got an answer for that. Thanks. I had no idea what that was, but I guess that's our answer. It was, uh, they were doing the heart sign with their fingers. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, theater is no longer really using movie projectors. It's projectors hooked to a computer. Projectors hooked to a computer. Okay, that's interesting. That's sort of, like, on the same vein of, like, I remember, uh, Gerard, the completionist, was talking about how, like, he wanted to have a DDR cabinet uh where so he can play the game whenever he wants essentially because he loves the game so much but maintaining arcade cabinets is very difficult to do and like expensive as heck but like there's the solution in which you could just like hollow out the shell of an arcade cabinet or you could recreate it but then have like a computer or a pc inside of it that just sort of recreates it and it's the same quality and it's like more consistently like stays well working over time so that's something that I was sort of looking into because the only Idolmaster game I don't have now is the arcade game, the original arcade game. So um, that might be something I would want to look into, uh, to, like recreate my own arcade cabinet. <laughs> that's a thing I could do, but that's a that's a project for another day. <coughs> okay, all right, sorry about that. Uh, I forgot where the mute button is, so I apologize. Okay, it's been so long I forgot how to mute. Uh, where am I? Where, where, where are we? What, what day is this? <laughs> Idol who? Idol master? I just met her. Okay. Uh, where was I? Um, yeah, it just, it's an energetic song. It gets everyone excited. 
Um, I was also very worried, like, going into both these days that I was going to fall asleep during these concerts, because... Oh my god, because, like, obviously the Japan time and America time was completely different. I don't remember the exact specific time. It's, I think it started at either one or two. And the concerts are, like, four hours long each, so it was, like, I was up till 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or something. So... I was worried I was going to fall asleep, but of course, like, could not possibly fall asleep during these performances. They were just so high energy, and I was just so happy the entire time. So, I powered through, and then I fell asleep for many, many days after. It was very, very fun, though, and just, like, a lot of fun, like, uh, choreography moments of dancing and standing and sitting and whatnot. It was very, very fun. Okay, so our first solo of the evening is Zone of Fortune. As we're confused with Wheel of Fortune, it is... Uh, Ch uh, not, is an Azusa image song performed by Chiaki. It originated from the Petit Idolmaster album in 2013, and this is its concert debut, which is very, very cool, and is very different from uh, what we had heard previously with uh, Chiaki in the first day. Like, she had a much more uh, flirtatious song in the first day, and like, uh, this is a completely different vibe, just uh, more so focuses on the, <clears throat> the lightheartedness and cheeriness of Azusa. Oh my god, my voice is going. Give me a second. And this is the part of the stream where Nightshade is like, maybe you should have split into two days. And then I'm just like, nah, I can't do that. Idol Master, I barely know her. Tee hee hee. Okay, okay, okay. I got this. But yeah. Um, it's just a very fun song. I like how it was like a completely different vibe from of uh, yesterday's performance. But of course, even though like it's still Chiaki, so she's still able to like win over every crowd in every situation. She knows how to uh, get everyone excited. So just have like that Chiaki charm as well. They're magically delicious, they say. <laughs> no, okay. So up next, I love this pose right here. Uh, we got Positive Thinker. This is from Master Artist 4. This is Ami's image song. Makes sense as we had a Mami image song from the previous day. So it is the concert debut of this song as well. And something that I always forget with, like, I know a, a common uh, point of praise that I have with a lot of these seiyus and a lot of the idols and with, with their singing is that they have range that I tend to forget about. And I guess with the twins specifically because they are the youngest members in the group and they have like a very bubbly lighthearted songs i i think them more than anyone else i tend to forget how much range the seiyu has but like every now and again they get to have they get to show it off and it's really interesting to see like asami has very very great range she's able to like i love hearing the futami twins in deeper voices which i don't get to hear all that often and then, of course, the backup dancers are here as well. They just, like, have the same energy from the first day, just making every performance more and more enjoyable. And it was just a... This is my first time hearing this song, and it was my... It was another reminder of just, like, everything I love about the Futami Twins. It just reminded me, like, the dynamic that they're able to provide, but then also they continue to surprise you when they take things seriously, and um, it was just a really cool thing to see. I love getting to hear different sides of people's voices, which was just super fun to hear. Back, all range mode. I like the little petting a cat emoji. He petting his tongue and nose. Hope that's safe. Okay, uh, up next. Okay, this was an interesting one up next. So our next one was a image song from Hibiki. This is Ponde Beach, uh, but Here's the thing, it's Hibiki's image song, so technically she should be the only one who is able to sing it. But she is on stage with Eriko, Mayako, and Hiromi, which was shocking and surprising because previously the song had never been sung by anyone other than Manami. Uh, the song originated in Idolmaster 1 for All, and uh, seeing all four of them on stage, it really took everyone by surprise. I don't know why this is specifically, I can only like speculate I suppose, but um, for some reason Mayako is the, or Manami is the only one who doesn't have a solo performance in this uh, second day. I don't know if like something happened with like scheduling or like she just wanted like some extra support for the song or I have no idea. 
but um, she decided to share her image song with uh, three new idols who had never sung it before, so we got to like see a completely new experience that we're probably never going to see again, honestly. So that was just like a very interesting thing. And um, what they were doing on the, in the audience, they were actually like creating a wave because like it's a beach song, so uh, they were creating a wave with like the glow sticks and they were going across the stage and everything like that. It was like a very fun song interacting with the crowd and everything. And, like everyone was into it, everyone was super happy. And like, I guess that's fun just to see like idols sing songs like they had never sung before. And then, oh my god, Eriko was exhausted. Like, this is when they took another break. Eriko was absolutely exhausted, was saying that, like, Monami, how do you sing this song with so much energy? How do you do it? You're so amazing. And then Monami's just like, what? No, I'm not, not anything special. Like, she just kept on commenting and be like, I have no idea how you do this. And she's like, oh, this is fine. I'm just doing my best up here. So it was just very, very fun and cute. Just like hearing like their reactions to performing that song for the first time. And also just like praising Monami for all that she's done. And then, uh, what is up next? Where is it? Uh, so our first MC segment. Now that we're like in the meat and potatoes of the concert. Um, the game this time around is not really a game. It's just everyone uh, having a similar topic to discuss during this concert and the uh where, where did it go okay oh wait, no no wait, we're not there yet i apologize don't want to skip ahead so um after the performance takes place we get um naomi and asami and rie and yumi who pop up on stage and all of them are jealous that they didn't get to be part of the wave that took place during that performance so all of them like demand that they do another wave with the audience right now so they do like the whole wave they get set up and like they have all the glow sticks go across the entire stadium and it's amazing what do you even call this thing a stadium a theater a concert auditorium i have no clue but then also like they have a color coordinate with everyone's image colors and they change it throughout which is really really cool looks sort of like a watermelon tee <laughs> okay so, um, where are we? Okay, the uh, segment for this one is uh, called Idle Heart, based off of the song Idle Heart, of course. <laughs> um, it, um, basically, the theme is that everyone is going a venue, okay. Must be all the power of thirst, yes, that's it. No, was that watermelon bit yours or theirs? Uh, that was mine. Like, I know it was, like, everyone's image color, so, like, it went from green to, like, everyone's, like, Naomi was on the end with, like, green, and then, like, Yumi was on the end with Carmine, so it just looked like a watermelon from that angle. Where are we? Okay, I'm just, like, I'm sort of... I'm, I'm keeping it together. I'm doing my best. We're here. We're here. We're gonna do it. Okay, um... <laughs> idle heart segment everyone talks about what they would like to do going into the new year because in oh geez stream freezy stream freezy is stream freezy stream good stream bad are we still here oh there was network air wait are we good is that just on my end are we good are we good are we good are we good please tell me if we're good or not friends are we still here it's not freezy z peak so just, the stream just crashed on my end. That's fun. Uh, we good? Okay, I'll just refresh it. Uh, oh geez. Oh god. Connecting to chat. Maybe I shouldn't have refreshed the chat. Uh oh. Okay, we're good. It's loading. Welcome to the chat room. I guess I'm just gonna have to trust it. Like, is it the ethernet that's just keeping things together? Cause it's like, it does not. We thick? I didn't say we thick, did I? If I did, I didn't mean to. Okay, I'm just gonna have to trust it, I guess. I hope everything's okay. Uh, the second things take a turn for the worst. Let me know, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, we're on this segment forever, I apologize. <laughs> Idle heart segment. Everyone wants to talk about what they what they want to do going into the new year. Because, can someone please correct me? I, I, I meant to look this up, but I just ran out of time when I was, like, assembling notes and everything. Um, the way, like, 
it's set up in Japan, like, they still have New Year's, like, at the end of December, beginning of January, but also, like, I guess with, like, a school year, they have, like, a, like, a second New Year with the halfway point. Uh, so, like, in summertime is when, like, they have, like, another sort of New Year's sort of celebration. Is that correct? Or am I just, like, pulling that out of my booty? Hopefully I'm, like, somewhat accurate on that. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong on that. No, that's explosions. Oh, no. Uh, so everyone was talking about, like, stuff that they wanted to do in the New Year. Stuff they wanted to change or stuff that they are looking forward to or whatever. Okay, so, now that... that overly long 10 minute explanations out of the way my god Manami mentions wanting to get her hair cut how very thrilling but no um she wanted to mention wanting to get her hair cut um saying she wanted to try a new style and maybe she'll be doing that after this performance is over she had to like keep it this link for hibiki but um maybe she'll try something new in the future and i'm very happy to say as the leader of short hair supremacy um, she did indeed get her haircut after, uh, this concert, and you can see it on her Twitter if you are, uh, if you want to see what the new look is like, so that's very, very cool. Um, so that is very nice and dandy. And up next we have, we switch over here, we can, to Eriko. Eriko's super ambitious, uh, goal for the new year is to drink more orange juice. How very thrilling. Uh, yeah, that's her, uh, goal for this year is to just drink more orange juice. And then she starts looking around the crowd asking if anyone has orange juice. And she does manage to find, like, one person who's, like, showing the orange juice. And let me see if we can find it. We got this person, the hero of the hour, who's got the orange juice. And then Eriko's just like, awesome, you're living the dream. I want to, like, be as awesome as you one day, drinking orange juice. And then later <laughs> that day, of course, because she, she has to confirm it, on Twitter, she posts a picture of herself drinking orange juice, and or just her with orange juice. And um, the caption for this photo, that's the word caption. The caption for this photo is just says, this photo is very bad, which was hilarious. <laughs> like She's just like, I'm very happy for this concert, but then like in parentheses, this photo is very bad. I'm just like, it's a picture of orange juice, Erika. What, 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 what's wrong with it? I don't know, it was just very, very funny. <laughs> like she was critiquing herself about just like having an orange juice drink. Oh my god, that was a very long segment, I apologize for that. They talk a bit more about their new year plans, and then um, the show resumes once again. Okay, and speaking of orange juice, we have a song about a sort of different drink. And I guess you could say it's a very thirsty song, because Chiaki's here. It's a song called Lemonade from Azumi and Chiaki. It originated from the Idol Master Master Primal Popping Yellow album in 2017. I love these names. And this is the first time it's being sung by these two on a concert setting. And I don't know what it is about this song, but like people were psyched about this song. People were so ecstatic in chat, like would not stop obsessing over Lemonade. Like I'd never heard this song before. Like it was at this moment where I felt like, uh, did I miss another fruit controversy? You literally just came back, Jacket, like after Erico had mentioned how she wanted to drink more orange juice. And she, like, had to post on Twitter, be like, I am drinking orange juice, just to show people that, just to prove that she was drinking orange juice for some reason. So, yeah, I guess there was another fruit controversy. Um, but, yeah, um, like, everyone was freaking out about Lemonade. I was not expecting that, because, like, I never heard this song before. Like, I felt like a fake Idolmaster fan, because I just never heard this before, and people just really loved this song, so that was really, really cool. And, uh, it's just a very interesting song also an interesting duo with uh azumi and chiaki because like of course yukio is like a very innocent character and like azusa is as well but then like of course chiaki is uh always about like being very uh, i need like more safe words in my vocabulary very flirtatious on stage and i guess you could say it's just it was the most sensual song about lemonade i've ever heard in my entire life i'll just leave it at that and it was just interesting to hear like the combination of these two voices that um see what they were able to provide when they aren't performing on their own so that was very very cool okay <laughs> i like this pose looks like they're i don't know if it's like trying to pose to look like a lemon but that's just what i thought of when i saw it which is very cool and then what is up next uh someone's gonna have to help me out with this pronunciation for the song it's lisola i believe 
Um, it is another solo by Rie, originated from Master Special 6 in 2009. It's an Yori Image song, and it hasn't been in a concert since the 8th anniversary. So it was a much cheerier song than yesterday, so again, keeping the vibe of like having two different, completely different uh, tones for everyone's individual image songs, which is nice for their solos. And just completely captures the essence of summer, and again, I love the twin tail look, it looks super adorable. And I'm just happy to see you're doing well. It's just a very great uh, song choices all around with everyone. And uh, hearing this song for the first time, it was a very fun experience. So just having all this fun stuff and then backup dancers were great for it as well. It was a very, very fun time. Now, up next, a little five second spoiler, I guess. Up next is uh, another Mayako song. Uh, so... Uh, remember her previous one for the first day was super adorable. I lost my stinking mind to how cute she was, but What in the world could Mayaka do as Yayoi to make herself even more adorable and to make me even happier than I already am? As if she wasn't adorable enough, Mayako just waltz onto the stage Holding a stinking- oh wait, wow, I messed up. Okay, we got another image of Okay, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Maiko rolls in with a stinking fairy princess wand. The nerve of this girl being so stinking adorable. <laughs> and I was just absolutely losing. I was just like, oh my god, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. I was just so stinking happy. Uh, this is Pipika Lyrica, which I love that name. It's from Master Artist 4 to Yayo Image Son, and it's the concert debut. And my god, she was so stinking adorable with this one as well. She was able to light up the entire stage with the wand. She lit up the stage wherever she pointed, and then everyone started dancing whenever she, like, like summoned them or brought them to life. It was amazing. I loved it so much. Oh my god, I could not... <laughs> it's thinking, like, how could you dislike Yayoi? How could you dislike Mayako? It's just, like, she's the nicest, cutest, cheeriest person on the entire planet. Like, the most precious, precious character person in the entire galaxy. And I will literally fight anyone to the death if they disagree with me or if they uh, try to make her sad in any way. Because my god, I could not stop smiling. I did not think she was going to be able to top her first performance, but she did. Somehow, in some way, she was just absolutely incredible. So stinking precious, so stinking happy. Just made me very, very, very happy. Oh, <sighs> okay. A backflip? Is it a backflip? It's a backflip, isn't it? Oh my god, that'd be so cool if that happened. Uh, but yes, up next is Maji Day, which you might remember from day one. This is the festival song the with the Taiko collaboration. Uh, but now we have all the other members who didn't sing it in day one singing it this time, so we have a completely different experience with it. And this is also sort of just like the marker for like the halfway point of each day. So we're going, moving along way too quickly, I don't like that. Uh, but yeah, it's just having every member, every new member here as well, and this one's extra special special because it has Hiromi. Well, you thought I was going to yell again? Okay. Hiromi! You don't have to yell during every situation. Except, yes, I totally do. Okay, but yeah, it was, um, of course, you had to, like, they had to make festival outfits for every single one of them. We couldn't just have half of them with a new festival outfit. Because, of course, we also had to sell it as merchandise. We had to make sure it was available for everyone afterwards. But it was a super fun, high energy song. I was happy to see it again because it was completely different from yesterday's. And I like how it was just, it's completely unique. It doesn't take away from yesterday's performance at all because they're able to stand on their own as individuals and everything like that and create these unique combinations, which is very, very fun. And then the door to darkness opens up, Sora. I don't know what's happening here. This uh, it goes dark again. And then there's silence again. What could it possibly mean, everyone? And then we see the window in the back turn into a door again. I have no idea what it could possibly be. But of course, as the door opens, once again, we have Judy making her reappearance once again. She is another special guest appearance because she wasn't guaranteed for the first day either. But um, she wasn't guaranteed for the first day or the second day, even though she didn't mention she was going to be back tomorrow. So it was very exciting to see her once again. Uh, this song is Omoide Wa Aien Ni. It is a Kotori Image song, and this is her concert debut of the song. I believe this song released this year, so that's interesting. Like, it's also great that like 
you wouldn't think Kotori would get songs in the in today's day and age, but um, they still managed to make sure she has moments to shine, which is really great. Um, after the first day of the concert, she actually made a Twitter account, and she has a very, very hilarious uh, Twitter account with like a lot of fun tweets on there that I've been having fun reading. So um, be sure to follow her on Twitter so you could see all the keep up with all the cool stuff that Juri Takita is up to. And um, yeah, she was just talking about how grateful she was for the day, and like she wasn't expecting so much warm reception as soon as she made a Twitter account. Like everyone was like talking about how great she was and how much they missed her and everything. And I've just been very happy to see that happen. I would very much like it if every member of Namiko Pro had a Twitter account, uh, just so we could keep up with all of them, but unfortunately not all of them do. Uh, but it's very, very fun. And her songs, like, they all have, like, a general, like, they have a very similar tone in terms of, like, uh, they're very peaceful songs, but they all manage to have their own unique feel to them. They're always very emotional and uplifting and vulnerable but um each one was like special and unique and of course like the camera work is completely unique as well so you get that new experience every time and it was absolutely wonderful and of course now that she's here namiko pro all stars plus is complete once again so it's very very nice take a drink for every time i say very very throughout this entire performance <laughs> this entire stream or whatever um, so Jury mentions that her goal for the new year was to perform on a stage like this and be able to perform more and being given the opportunity to voice Kotori um, with everyone just meant the absolute world to her so she was just very grateful to be here and thanks everyone for making her dream come true and we wouldn't have it any other way we're very happy to have her but now it's no time for happy pappy talk we gotta get back to fighting each other because it's time for another splat fest so now this one this one's actually being pulled by uh, the winner's gonna be decided by everyone in the audience this time instead of online. The question is, where would you like to go during the summer? Your options are beach or festival. I know, like, when I translated option A, it was C, like S E A, but I just thought it would be kind of confusing to say, like, you wanna go with A, C, or B, festival. It was like A, C, D, C, or something. But yeah, so you wanna go to the beach or the festival? What does chat say? Uh, let's see, we got festival, a beach festival, obviously, the perfect vacation. Yeah, um, I love swimming personally, but I am not a fan of the beach at all, because, like, it's, uh, very dirty, in my opinion, and I'm not very private. So, but even though, like, obviously a festival is not private either, but, like, I don't know, I just don't like swimming in public ocean water, so just sort of, eh, I prefer pools. Um, so festival would definitely be my choice here, plus, who wouldn't want to go to a festival? Come on. Texas beaches are very gross, so be for me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're trying to decide between beach and festival. And apparently there was too much violence last time between Arigo and everyone else because of the watermelon fiasco. So none of the idols are picking sides today. So they're just going to be uh, talking about the pluses and minuses of both of them. Um, when they were talking about uh, beaches or like going out to sea, like I guess because sea. Well, they're talking about like, the idea of like sailing out to sea maybe. Uh, having like a a boat vacation or just going to some different island resort uh, like Hawaii because Eriko says aloha and does that pose which I absolutely loved it was very funny <laughs> um, everyone is talking about their pros and cons but it seems that very quickly it's very one-sided in one direction gee I wonder where the vote is gonna go I have no idea whatsoever <laughs> it seems very split don't you think so then the winner goes to festival. Surprise, surprise. So now that we have that pull taken care of, and thankfully there was no excessive violence this time around, or acts of, tre acts of treason, or anything like that, so uh, we're able to uh, just continue onward with the performances. So what's up next? Hiromi! Okay, <laughs> Hiromi's up next with Ever Sunny. This is Master Artist 4, it's a Makoto Image song, concert debut, and I have never heard this song before this day, so I was very, very excited to hear it from her. Okay, so this is like more what I was hoping to see, just like something unexpected from Makoto that I wouldn't, hadn't seen before, and like, it was just absolutely wonderful. She's very radiant, awe-inspiring, <laughs> everlasting, oh my god, just like looking at my notes, just be like, what the fruit? Calm down past midnight, let future midnight make a fool of midnight of every generation. What? Okay. <laughs> it was just like a very wonderful event, everyone. 
uh, absolutely loved Hiromi as soon as she started singing, everyone was super into it. And, um, I think there were backup dancers for this one as well. Yes, there were. Okay, there we go. And they were also, like, had perfect energy for this, because all Hiromi songs have, like, great, great energy. And it was just really, really great. <laughs> so, I have it in my notes that I wanted to talk about a certain story right here. So I guess I'll get that story done. This is going to be, like, the emotional talk of this of this day, I guess, since we had, like, the Rie emotional talk yesterday, and now we have this this one today. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to make this quick, but, like, this is just, like, a, a touchy subject, I guess, for me. Um, there's, like, another thing that I had appreciated with, uh, seeing Hiromi on stage, like, not just, like, seeing, like, how, uh, drastically she had changed her hair for this performance, which, uh, I really loved, but also, um, usually whenever there's, like, these big group performances with everyone, they tend to put Hiromi in the back because everyone's typically dressed in their image colors, and they're meant to, like, show off, like, the colors of the rainbow, I guess. And since hers is black, I suppose it's just, like, not one of the more interesting colors to show in a rainbow uh, aesthetic, I suppose. So, like, whether it's, like, in the games or the art official artwork or um, here live on stage, she's always, like, um, in, like, one of the corners or in the back of every, every group that she's in. But something I had really appreciated was that, like... I was just taking the time to think that, like, even though she is in the back, I still, like, I have no trouble seeing her, and, like, she's the only one I'm focused on because she's my favorite idol. And the reason this is is because, like, um, I apologize if I'm, I'm just struggling to talk about this, but, like, um, I, like, I don't have the best of experiences with trying to make myself, like, present in public spaces because I like I have like I'm severely anxious and scared and, and being able to like function in those public environments is very difficult for me and I'm not telling this story in an attempt to like get any sort of like like support or trying to get any other like other party in trouble or anything like that that's not why I'm trying to tell the story I'm just talking about the reason I want to share this story right now is because of talking about how Hiromi here today helped me heal from something that has been very difficult for me for a very long time. And that was that, like, um, there was a time where I was at a PAX and there was, um, a certain meetup that had occurred where I was just, like, super anxious and afraid to be, like, super active in it. So I wasn't really talkative much, but then, like, I, um, I was appearing in a lot of footage that had appeared online later onwards and... Um, I was, there were, I was met with, like, some ridicule from people who, I guess you could say, weren't fans of me that were making comments about how I was always in the back and how scared I was and how, like, uncomfortable I looked and were just, like, sort of ripping me apart at that moment and I just felt very, very scared and uncomfortable and, like, I honestly haven't, anytime I've gone to a pack since, I've never mentioned it publicly because I just, I don't want to be, I don't want people to know that I'm there unless it's like the people I'm actually meeting up with and I'm just like I'm horribly afraid of making public appearances so it was just a very difficult thing for me and the same thing with just like how I don't necessarily fit into everyone's like vision of like what they want for a TV setting or for a stage setting where like I'm just I'm dr drastically different of uh, appearance from everyone else around me and I'm often just like either not wanted to be associated with when like trying to do acting performances or trying to just fit in a public setting I'm always just like put in the back because it was just like trying to be out of everyone's way and it was just very it's very scary and difficult for me to just try and be in any sort of public setting because I'm always afraid of like having other people be afraid of me for how I look or be being afraid of me for like just how much room I take up or anything like that and it's just very very difficult it's always just something that haunts me and it's something that's always just been a struggle for me to deal with but when I saw Hiromi on this stage, there was something that just clicked with me. When I saw her in the back, that memory came back to me of just, like, being made fun of for standing in the back of a crowd. And I was able to not fall into darkness and despair in that moment because I was looking, I was acknowledging that Hiromi was in the back as well. 
but to me she was the most beautiful one on that entire stage and she wasn't out of sight or out of view at all so I could see her no problem and that's just it it's just that like the people who care about you will always look out for you no matter where you are on the stage and that was just sort of a comforting thing to think about that like even if I am if I do continue to be in the back because of of not wanting to get in the way of other people knowing that Hiromi and Makoto will be right there with me that just meant a lot to me that was just I know it's like it's a super silly thought but it was just like something that really meant a lot to me that like knowing that I'm not alone back there and that even if I am back there it's not out of the way it's just a matter of who's watching you because it's something like similar to what Eriko says every time when like a concert happens it's something that Haruka mentions in the anime that like no matter where you are in the audience I see you I appreciate you and I can see you and that's something that was true for me as well where like no matter where Hiromi was on stage I saw her and I was just so happy to see her smiling and seeing her like her positive energy and seeing how uh, just graceful and um, happy she was to be there and just happy she was to be herself and just it's admirable in every sense of the word and I just wish I could have like one percent of that confidence in my own self and my own presence and it was just something that I really appreciated that that's helped me a lot and like from every day onward since this concert happened I've stopped having those haunted haunting thoughts about like trying to like stay out of people's ways in certain rooms or in certain environments because like it just she helped me feel less alone no matter like if I am in the back then she made me feel less alone in the back or if I do stand in the front then like there might be people who accept me in the front <laughs> so I don't know I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense but that's just what this performance did for me and that's like as soon as I had seen her, seen her in like the first performance of day one when I saw her up in the corner up on that on that balcony it was it meant the world to me when I saw that because like no matter where the camera went she was the only one I saw and it didn't take away from how happy I was to see her so it's just a matter of finding the right people who are willing to accept you and I'm grateful to have found people like you who accept me and I'm grateful to have an opportunity to try and create that environment for other people and I hope more than anything that's the message I've been able to create with my time on the internet because I know I like I have like a lot of criticisms about like uh, game gaming opinions and just like um, I know my interests tend to vary drastically from people around me but something I just want to prioritize going forward with everything I create and with everything I do with my life going forward is just to make sure people feel loved and safe in this world and it's because of like the experience with Starlet and just with what Hiromi has done for me that I want to continue to create that for other people. I'm not going to be the best at it. I'm going to fail a lot. I'm still failing a lot. I still like am trying to fix myself and better myself. But I'm just making that statement right now because that's this is something that I want to do and this is something I want to like try to achieve. So yeah, I guess that's just that's all I wanted to say and just I want to say thank you all for accepting me for who I am and supporting me throughout all of this because it's it's very very difficult to make it through day to day and it's moments like this and people like you who make it possible and make it worth it <sighs> so yeah that's all I could that's all I wanted to say regarding that I just wanted to say thank you to Hiromi and thank you to everyone who accepts me for who I am accepts Jeffrey accepts Midnight and Beyond accepts every part of me on any day it's not easy I know but I want you to know that every time it happens it's always appreciated and I need to mention it more okay all right so after that after that emotional moment it's just having a the time of my life listening to Hiromi sing it's time for another song where it's just like the first note the second I hear that first note I absolutely lose it because this is one of my favorite songs in all of Idol Master. This is Miracle Night. Yeah, surprise, surprise, Midnight would like a song called Miracle Night. Originated in Platinum Stars, the PlayStation 4 game, uh, in 2016. This is the first concert appearance with this combo of singers. Personally, I would have had a Hiromi sing this, but that's the point of the concert to give me new experiences that I uh, wouldn't have thought to create within the game world. So, yeah, I was super excited when I heard this one because, like, and again, this is one when. 
the second you hear the first note, the entire crowd loses it because everyone loves this song. Honestly, this is one of the things where I'm like, I'm tempted to stream Platinum Stars and sell a stage just so I have an excuse to hear this song some more and so I have an excuse to share it with more people because it's such a good song. It's so stinking good. Oh my god. I would like be willing to even though like I feel like Starlet will always be like the superior like experience for everyone to witness and for me to create. I feel like just for the sake of getting to hear this song some more is worth it just so I could like hear it some more and like share it with more people. Oh my god, it was just such an incredible thing. I loved everyone's like energy and their uh, uh, collaboration with each other. It was just like perfect and in sync and everything. Oh my god, it was just a really amazing time. Everyone did a spectacular job and it was really, really amazing. Um, got a nice little glow, glow stick shot right here. I like it like the close-up of the glow stick. I missed it, unfortunately. The close-up of the glow stick, you see like it's a sparkly effect when you get really close to them, which is really, really cool. And then surprise, surprise, Juri has another song. So um, she starts singing Hikari, which was uh, from Master Artist 2 in 2010. Um, this is, uh, so yeah, it's again, in sort of the same vein as like, um, in the same vein as e having Idleheart be at the beginning of the uh, day two concert instead of at the end, because like she started singing a song that just recently released but then she ends off with like one of her earlier songs. So just showing that like this isn't going to be the end. That won't be the last time you hear from her. So I just really like the decision making with that. I love all the lights right here. And then we get like the two different image colors. I imagine like green because of like her outfit um, as a secretary and then also her hair color. And then like I believe yellow is her actual image color that she's associated with when uh, the manga was released. And then that's like sort of. I remember that was like the biggest fiasco when like all the different idol master branches started coming out. I was just like, we ran out of colors in the rainbow. We can't have any more idol characters because everyone's going to be using each other's image colors. It's not right. But no, it's fine. It was, I also like that they are slightly different shades for like everyone's image colors. So that's nice. Um, yeah, her story in the manga just really surprised me. I just was not expecting that. Um... It's something that I would very much recommend to anyone, even if like, if that's your introduction to Idolmaster, because Idolmaster is a multimedia franchise. It's not just strictly an anime series or a video game series. Like whatever you're specifically into, if you're into concerts. This might be something you're into if you just want to see the concerts, or if you just want to read the manga, if you just want to like, if you're just into gacha games or mobile games or whatever. There's an option for everyone. It's just a matter of, oh, your, it's just a matter of your own personal preference. So that's very very cool. And we have this it's really beautiful uh, shadow image right here, which is really cool. Just looking at her like her past self or something like that. And just seeing how far she's grown and everything like that. And then as she finishes, she says to everyone in the audience, she says, I'm off. Like she's heading off now. So it is bittersweet um, just hearing her say goodbye because like this is going to be her last song for the evening. But also just a call back to when she began her, her journey. I'm just saying I'm heading off to make my dream come true. And then she wound up becoming someone that even she couldn't even expect. So yeah, it was very, very, it was very emotional and very heartfelt goodbye. But we'll see each other again. Speaking of emotional, oh god. So emotional stories keep on happening. So up next is Akashi, which is the solo for uh, Naomi this evening. It is Ritsuko's image song from Master Artist 4, concert debut. Uh, so when the song that Jury just sang, um, it released around the time that Idolmaster 2 had released, and that is a very specific, that's a very difficult time for Naomi, like I'd mentioned about the 961, not 961, 918, 918, 918, the incident in which, like, voice actors were, or certain idols were getting, like, removed from the game because of, like, uh, scheduling conflicts where people weren't able to accommodate for their schedules, so... Um, she wasn't able to perform as Ritsuko, and I had already talked about, I've gone to length about how much she adores her job and everything, and this was a lot more, a much more emotional piece when she was in that headset of, like, thinking of, like, thinking back to that time of Idolmaster 2, but then also with this song, how it's a very emotional piece about, about growth and recovery and everything, and trying to continue to go towards a, a dream that, uh, making sure it doesn't get forgotten. And... 
just thinking about like the certain things that they're able to do that no other performer is typically allowed to do just the fact that a lot of them are they're all in their mid 30s to mid 40s and they're still being able to have these performances like this it's something that isn't guaranteed to continue forever like whether or not their own uh their own schedules or their own uh abilities or it could just be a matter of the big companies just pulling the plug whenever they see it fit so um she was like taking time to think about that throughout the song and she started to uh break a little bit during it and that was very very difficult to see and very heartbreaking like i had a feeling like someone was going to cry during a song and it wound up being naomi where she just started to uh crack a little bit and um everyone started to clap and cheer for her and everyone in chat was so incredibly supportive everyone absolutely adores her and like i said like no matter what you think of this entire franchise you cannot say anything bad about this woman she is absolutely over the top 100% passionate and devoted to this entire franchise she adores her job and she adores everyone who lets her do what she does and just completely like embodies everyone's happiness and support and just creates these <clears throat> these very emotional performances and like makes these concerts what they are because it's the moment where she gets to express herself and she gets to um express her gratitude towards everyone for letting her do this and it was just very heartwarming to see just how supportive everyone was of her and despite like all the uncertainties that these past few years have had like just looking back on all the uncertainties of the Idolmaster franchise as a whole like I've it's been very scary honestly I, I've been having the same insecurities and fears that like I'll never get to hear them perform in person but I feel like these people are 100% devoted to this franchise and are going to be continuing to perform for as long as humanly possible so I'm looking forward to the day where I could uh, watch them all perform in person and possibly thank them in person for everything that they've done because the, you don't get like this level of genuine love and passion from people with like a lot of the things that get created out in the world like just just taking the moment to appreciate just how wonderful and honest and sincere of a person she was I was just very very emotional and I'm just happy to have her everyone's happy to have her it was it was a great it was a great song great performance and everyone of course was ready to uh, congratulate her as soon as she had concluded okay okay let me try to do a better job at talking about this it's intermission time which means everyone's going to be talking about their hopes and dreams for the new year so then let's try and rapid fire this look at me i'm already pressing play i'm already going to the next segment look at me Look at me switched over to the new thing. So, Mayako says, um, again, I might be uh, paraphrasing here, so I apologize if I get like every detail 100% correct. Um, Mayako says that like she uh, looks up to, to Chiaki and she wants to like uh, be more like her, and that was very surprising to Chiaki. And I remember uh, Mayako was like getting super flustered when trying to compliment her and trying to like just talk about like the things that like she admires about her, and she was like, I feel like she was messing up over her words a lot. I was like. She was getting like a lot of laughs out of the audience. She was like trying to like reset her sentences a lot. It was very funny. And then, um, and <laughs> Chiaki was just like complimenting her as well. And then like she's just like Mayako completely loses it because like you cannot, nobody could withstand the charm of Chiaki and <laughs> just like getting completely overwhelmed by her. And then she just like starts like bowing in her presence. Then Akiko's just like no 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 don't do that here. <laughs> oh my god, it was just amazing. And then Chiaki. Uh, talks about her hopes and dreams for the future and like she just gets all real with y'all being like hey kids have you heard about this thing called instagram there's this thing with like the the instagram stories where i see them sliding around like she starts telling everyone about instagram <laughs> as if we hadn't heard of it before which is very funny but she just talks about like how she wants to get more into instagram she wants to be like an influencer on there and i believe she already is though like i think she just wants to like broaden her uh her appeal and her horizons and whatnot She's talking about Instagram stories, and I'm just like, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, yes, I see, oh, yes. Like, in reality, I don't know anything about Instagram, so maybe she was teaching me something. But, um, she was talking about how the people she sees on Instagram tend to be in very, uh, specific poses. 
I think she was referring to them or herself. She kept on using the word juicy. That's all I remember. It's just like the constant use of the word juicy. And she was constantly posing when talking about all the different Instagram models and like talking about like what she wants to do, what like she's seen other people do. And for the rest of the night, she just keeps on using the word juicy to refer to herself and to other people. And like everyone was thinking laughing their butts off because we could not get enough of the stinking juicy Chiaki moment. <laughs> it was so amazing. And oh my god, it was like every single pose she has, like the camera people were like on point with like making sure like her poses were seen. They got that done. There were so many leg shots. My god, every time she mentioned legs, they just cut back to the legs of her posing and everything. Oh my god, <laughs> it was just like I could not look at Asusa the same way again after this because Asusa is usually so innocent, but then like Chiaki is just like, yo, what up? Here's my juicy leg poses for my Instagram. Oh my god, so yeah, she talks about wanting to become a better influencer on Instagram. And then she tries to convince other people on stage to pose with her so that like they could do a group juicy pose. She's trying to find a volunteer, and then Asami just sells out Azumi, just pushes her in front and forces her to pose with her. And then uh, Chiaki walks over to Azumi, tries to pose with her, and tries to get her to show more leg, and then Azumi's just like, No, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> it was amazing, she was like super embarrassed, she didn't want to show any leg. Oh my god, it was amazing. So, she was like trying not to, like, be put into the juicy pose, essentially. <laughs> And then as like the two of them are talking, Akiko's trying to leave. <laughs> like she's just trying to like, cause she doesn't want to get put into a juicy pose either. So she just tries to leave. Then Azumi calls her out as she's leaving. She's like, wait a minute, get back here. And then Akiko gets like forced into doing the juicy pose. <laughs> and she's like, oh wait, I don't want to do it either. And then as like Chiaki's talking to Akiko, she like looks over Mako. She's like, wait a minute, Mayako-san. And then she's just like, like, notices her legs as well, and she's like, maybe you could do the juicy pose. <laughs> she's like, oh, I don't think so. I'm not really cut out for that sort of thing. And then she's like, wait, you know who is cut out for that sort of thing? And then, I'm um, trying to, like, distract her from herself. She tries to pull the blame on Asami now. Then everyone turns around, and looks like, Asami would be a good fit for this. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, everyone's just getting, like, pressured into doing juicy poses with Chiaki. Oh, my God. So... Oh my god, so first off, I love this shot right here because this is my main three, these are my main three idols, so I was just very happy to see the three of them, like, in a shot together. But also, like, As Asami's up for it, she's up to the challenge of, like, doing a juicy pose, but... So Chiaki asks her to do a twirl, she does the twirl, and then everyone applauds for it, and then, um, she starts to do a pose where, like, she shows a bit more leg, but then Akiko is immediately like, NO, NO, NO! No, we're not doing that here. She's like refusing it. She's like grounding everyone. Everyone's grounded for two weeks. Everyone's Christmases are canceled. It was amazing. We're just laughing their butt butts off. She just wanted to show leg and then Akiko's just like, no, I refuse. No more juice at this concert. And then Hiromi, <laughs> Asami like says that Hiromi should be doing poses too because she's the only one who hasn't been pressured into doing a pose. But Hiromi's the only one wearing pants so she can't show any leg. <laughs> And also, she's too confident, so she's not fun for Chiaki to tease, so she just moves on super quickly. <laughs> it was just, just hilarious. She's like, oh yeah, I could do a pose. I'm Hiromi. I'm so cool. Blah, blah, blah. I'm hot. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh my god. It's just so cool. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. I can't. I can't. Oh my god. It was just so good. I was not expecting Chiaki to be the star of this stinking concert. But she was. She was like one of the highlights or the highlight. So yeah, she like forces everyone. She like demands that everyone follows her on Instagram. If you have an Instagram, you gotta follow Chiaki. I believe her Instagram name is Juicy Chiaki. <laughs> so if you want to look her up. But um, she said if you don't, I think she said like if you don't follow her, then she's gonna find you and she'll like force you to do a juicy pose with her. So, that was amazing. Oh my god. So much juice. I wonder what the raid message is gonna be. Oh my god. Oh, so juicy. So, so juicy. So yeah, Akiko. If we could, like, reel it in for a bit. My god. Oh my god. Okay. So, Akiko talks about her hopes for the new year. She says that she wants to be more confident with 
her appearance. Like, I'm sure we've all had that New Year's resolution. We just want to, like, change something about our appearance or whatnot. But, like, everyone's, like, reassuring her. Like, we look wonderful. You look great. Like, and just, like, trying to make her feel more comfortable with who she is and how she is right now and everything. And, like, everyone cheers her on, which is great. And it was just, like, a nice wholesome moment after the juicy, the juicy entourage that just took place. But then, of course, as soon as she's, like, she's talking about she wants to be more confident with her body and with her appearance, Chiaki rolls in. She's like, oh, you want to be more confident with your body? Well, you know how you gotta do that. You gotta start posing, girl. And then she tries to get her to do a pose with her. And she's like, no, 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 no. She tries to pull her back in. And she's just like, no, forget it. It's over. <laughs> Oh my god, Chiaki would just not let up. She was so obsessed with trying to get people to pose. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And like, that was like the theme for the rest of the night. Where like, anytime Chiaki spoke or was seen, she was like, constantly on juicy patrol and on pose patrol. Always posing. Oh my god. It was amazing. Okay. Alright. Okay. So, on a much more wholesome note, <laughs> um, Asami uh, says that, like, she's trying to think of something that she wants to do for the new year, but she's still hung up on yesterday, where she wasn't allowed to compliment anyone. So she demands that she is given an opportunity to compliment Mayako. So she just takes a moment to talk to her, and just, uh, has some time to compliment her, but she also is upset that she didn't get complimented by anyone. So she also asks Mayako to compliment her because she just wants some nice compliments. So Mayako starts listing stuff off she wasn't prepared for this. And as she's trying to think of something, the timer appears in the background from yesterday. <laughs> like, even the stinking staff, the stinking lights and tech people in the back are stinking hilarious. They put the timer back up there. <laughs> and, like, the entire crowd laughs. And then when she turns around and sees it, she's like, ah! And then she just tries listing stuff off. She says that... Uh, she thinks Asami's beautiful and immensely talented. She says she looks up to her a lot, and she tries her best to just uh, make her happy, and then peace is restored. Hooray! Oh, oh my god. Jeez. So much juice. So little time. It's getting intense. I definitely gotta pose, though. My god. Uh, so, Azumi and Hiromi also mentioned, like, their hopes for the new year, but honestly, I don't even remember them. <laughs> Like, you, that's how you know a segment with Chiaki was good. If I can't even remember what Hiromi Hirata said, that's like, that says a lot right there. If I can't even remember what Hiromi said because I was too busy thinking about Chiaki. Oh my god. So yeah, that's it for this segment. And then we're going to go ahead and re resume whatever the fruit we're doing. Are we, are we singing? Are we in a concert? Sure, why not? Okay. So let's get on with the show. Oh boy, more juicy songs. So this is Honey Heartbeat. Oh my god, this is a classic Idol Master song from Idol Master 2. It originated uh, in Idol Master 2. It's from, this is the first time with this group of people on the concert stage. Okay, this is another oldie, another crowd pleaser. It's appeared in a bunch of concerts over the years, but like, this is the first time again with a specific group. Very fun, Chiaki, still doing the juicy poses. With <laughs> this thing in, like, it was perfect for this song though, so it worked out. Oh my god, everyone went nuts as soon as they heard it because it's a, a song that a lot of people grew up with. Oh my god, and from this point on, like, the crowd just gets more and more excited. Excuse me, they get, they get more and more excited with every with every new song. Like, the reactions just get bigger and bigger. Maybe it was just everyone was like, they couldn't hold in their excitement any longer. They wanted to continue to cheer for everyone. So, like, they were just, like, starting to become more and more loud as time went on. But it was just, like, everyone always maintained the trying to be quiet during uh, performances so they, their mouths weren't open so that's very good but the reactions are also just getting larger and larger which is great oh my god oh yeah 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 oh boy this concert was so stinking funny I, like i was not expecting the stinking talking portions to be so memorable for me but my god they were okay uh, give me a second to clear my voice real quick, because I've been talking for way too long about Juicy Juice. Okay. Are we still here? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I gotta jump off of the boing and look at the rest of the vlog. Keep the juice flowing. I'm sorry, Aki. I'll see you later. I'm 
sorry it took so long. We're sort of kind of done. Almost. Maybe another hour. But, okay, I'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Oh my god. Alright. So where are we now? Uh, for this song. My god, the reaction this one got, it was massive. You are not ready for what is going to take place during Nostalgia. This is a song that originated in Idol Master 1 for All. It's a Mickey Image song, and it's the concert debut song, even though it's been around for a really long stinking time. So you are not ready for what happened with this performance, let me tell you. So it started off, it's an amazing song. Like it just had great backup dancers. They were all like very high, high energy. And like, it was just a great uh, hearing the song. I hadn't heard it. If I did hear it, I heard it a long, long time ago. I didn't really remember it all that well. And um, the song is about like, it, encapsul it encapsulates Miki's image perfectly where she's talking about like how she wants to continue to grow and further and better herself. But also she doesn't want to lose who she previously was. And like Miki's a person who's like had a lot of different changes over the years. So she just wants to like hold on to who she originally was because that's still an important part of her and she wants to grow inside that person instead of growing from that person. So um, it was a very, very great song in terms of like the message and the meaning behind it. The screen in the background was like going wild with like a lot of flashing lights and whatnot uh, for the song. But then it gets to this moment and it just goes dark. And then it pulls in on Akiko as she's singing. And as she's singing, we get like, uh, she's singing a line about wanting to reunite with her past self and wanting to grow alongside one another. And as she's saying that line, we see quick glimpses for literal fractions of seconds. We see quick glimpses of Idolmaster 1 Miki appears for a split second, followed by dramatic drum roll. AWAKEN MIKI'S IN THE HOUSE! SHE WAS ACTUALLY THERE! OH MY GOD! STINKING AWAKEN MIKI! SHE'S ALIVE! SHE EXISTS! SHE WASN'T retconned. THE CREATORS ACTUALLY REMEMBER HER? THE STINKING FREAKOUT THAT HAPPENED WHEN SHE APPEARED ON SCREEN. PEOPLE EXPLODED. THIS WAS THE ONLY SONG TO GET A MID- MIDWAY REACTION OUT OF THE CROWD. LIKE, EVERYONE COULDN'T CONTAIN THEMSELVES. THEY JUST WENT WHAT? when they saw her again and then everyone in chat was losing their stinking minds because like for the longest time we haven't seen awakened miki since like early 2010 or something she doesn't exist in the modern day so the fact that they referenced her that they acknowledge her they didn't like retcon her from existence oh my god people were losing it it was a literal half a second that she was on screen but people were absolutely loving it and then like before we can even fathom it like the modern day miki pops up but, like people were still like completely fixated on the stinking awakened miki if that ever ever comes back if they ever bring that hairstyle back if they ever bring awakened miki back i will absolutely lose it i will be so happy it will be so exciting i i hope though i hope so my god that would be the coolest thing in the entire world if they do that i don't know if they ever will but like if this is a reference to, like they're they're considering the idea, maybe, possibly? I hope they do. Oh my god. So, I feel bad for the, for Yumi up next, who sings Hinotori. Um, it's from Master Artist 4, talking to Image Song, Concert Debut, yada yada, I heard it all before. So, I feel bad for her because, like, people in chat were still freaking out about Awaken Miki, like, throughout the entire performance. But, like, yes, we still love we still love this performance as well like it's a very powerful song like the yumi's previous song was very elegant and like it was perfect for takane's voice but then also like this one was just like a very powerful song like the background was also incredible like also how she's gonna how she's how is she going to one up herself this time around because before she had the kimono but now she has it again she's now she is like yo what up i got a fan now i'm just gonna be like even cooler than i was before so I have so many photos for this one because like so many incredible beautiful shots of her dancing and posing with the fan and then all the backup dancers also had fans that they were dancing with it was so cool so amazing the background was amazing it was like changing from like a fiery sun to like a a nighttime moon as opposed to a not nighttime moon but like it was so beautiful so cool and, like such a fierce powerful song it was so good Oh my god, there's like a bunch of Yumi pictures in here. So like, I, I did feel bad that like a lot of people were still talking about Owik and Miki in chat, but like, just make sure she gets her proper dues here because she was absolutely amazing. 
My god, I adored this song so stinking much. Just, like, completely, everyone was mesmerized by the vocals and by the, her, like, graceful movements in the dance and everything. There's so many good shots in the back of dancers. Like I said, they're amazing. They all had fans as well. And, yeah, it was very, very cool. So then I'm just wondering to myself, like, after Awaken Miki, and after this amazing Yumi performance, like, how in the fruit are they going to top themselves now? We still got a couple more songs to go. Like, how are they going to be able to top themselves more than they already have? Well then, Azumi Asakura waltz on to the stage with Cosmos Cosmos. This song originated from the Idolmaster SP in 2009. This is her image song from that game, and this is tied with one other song for being the oldest song to appear at this concert. Oh my god, the second that this note, that the first note hit, because everyone knows this song from the Idolmaster, it's one of the first songs you discover when you get into the Idolmaster. Everyone was losing their minds, everyone was so excited. This is Yukiho's song, like, for the longest time I thought this was her image song from Idolmaster 1 because of how often I hear this song and how, like, beloved it is. But no, like, this wasn't even from the arcade version, but, like, it still has that impact of being, like, one of the very first songs ever created. It was absolutely amazing. Everyone adored it. Oh my god. And, um, I've talked about before how Yukiho is the only member of Namiko Pro who has gotten, uh, her seiyuu, uh, replaced because of a certain event that took place in the past with her previous voice actor, Yuri Nahase. Uh, she had to, she retired from voice acting, and Azumi took over um, in Idolmaster 2 onward. And I've talked about how I do miss Yurina, and I miss um, that generation of Yukiho. And um, at the same time, I would just want to make sure that I, I didn't want to make it sound like I don't also respect and adore this incarnation of her as well, because um, Azumi was able to take the character to like completely different heights that Irina never got to do and she has made she has long since made this character all her own and I am grateful that like her performance as Yukiho is so unique and still like maintains like um everything about her that we love and it manages to just like it's the same thing where like every I'm able to love both the her uh seiyus like uniquely and equally so um a lot of people were saying that um, Yurina would have been really, really proud of this performance that Azumi was giving because this was, like, a song that Yurina had previously performed in live concerts and, like, of course, like, a lot of people associate Yurina's version of the song with, uh, with it when they hear it or when they think of it. But, um, like, Azumi just completely made it her own and she completely owns it and just, it's wonderful hearing just how perfect this performance was. It was really, really great, and I don't know if we ever will see Yurina make a return to the franchise. I don't know how that would work, if they would, like, both voice Yukiho in, like, different appearances, or if, like, they could create a whole new character for Yurina to take on. I don't know, but I I hope that she's at peace knowing that, like, uh, Yukiho is in good hands with Azumi because she does a wonderful job with her, and I am very, very grateful for everything that she's done for the character, and especially during, like, such a turbulent moment of Idolmaster history. Okay, so now that that is taken care of, oh yeah 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 yeah, what are we doing next? I wonder. Can they top themselves again? Do you think they could do it, folks? Survey says darkness again, with two people on stage. But wait a minute, you look closely and you notice that both of them are wearing yellow, but there's only one Seiyu who has the yellow image color so who in the world could she be partnered with wait a minute when you think about it what in the world happened at sunrich okay so this is star to star this is tied with cosmos cosmos for being the oldest song on the set list it originated from idol master sp as well it's the image song of both ami and mommy so namco has cloning technology now Apparently! Okay, but in all seriousness, what they wound up doing, they've never done before. This is a completely different performer who was performing alongside Asami Shimoda. Um, from what I was able to find, she just goes by Asuka. 
and she was one of the backup dancers who appeared in day one and day two but they had her uh, don mommy's outfit and her hairstyle and she performed alongside asami to create like the, for the first time ever ami and mommy on stage at the same time in a live concert which has never happened before it was absolutely insane so um they had talked about on twitter recently how they wanted to create something that had never been done before and they were grateful to everyone who made it possible and they uh Asuka was very grateful for the experience. Uh, Asami was very, like, overjoyed with how everything turned out and uh, would talk about how she'd like to do it again sometime. And the way they wound up doing this was um, because they, uh, Ami and Mami, share the same seiyu, they had Asami sing Ami's lines live on stage, but Mami's lines were the pre recorded version that are used for the CDs and for the game appearances. And um, Asuka would just mouth the lines as if she was singing it um, using a glow stick, which was amazing. I love that she had a glow stick microphone, which was really, really cool. But, like, it worked so well. And it's amazing that this has never been thought of before. This is the first time they've ever done this. Where, like, we have another body double to represent the Futami twins live on stage in person. And you're able to create completely different dynamic by having two people interact with one another and it just it felt so right it felt like this should have been the way it was since the very beginning having both like both twins represented on stage so they could like interact with one another because that's like sort of the appeal of the two of them is like they're always like playing off of one another so that was just absolutely amazing and like all the poses that they were able to do together and just like it embody the rambunctiousness of the futami twins and everything like that it was just so stinking cool. It was the highlight of a lot of people's experiences, and like I could I could totally understand why. It was just such a fun performance. It was so amazing and just high energy, and everyone was freaking out. Like we just did not know how it could get any better. It was just everyone was amazed at Awaken Miki. Everyone was amazed at Cosmos Cosmos, and then like this of all things out of nowhere, people were so stinking happy. Oh. <sighs> So yeah, I really hope they do this again. Like, I don't know if they want to like, continue to use Asuka. But, like, I thought she was amazing. But, like, if they want to, like, just have, like, other people be Asami's body double in future performances, that'd be amazing. I'd like that. And I guess we'll only have to, we'll have to wait and see. See what the future has in store. But now, we have our final two solos. So, who's going to follow up that performance? It's Asami, who do you think? So, as soon as she lets out those first lines, like, everyone loses it. Somehow, that gets an even larger reaction than seeing two Futami twins on stage. So, this is Mega Aotoki. This is originally from Master Artist 5 in 2007. It's Jihaya's image song for solo performance from, uh, of the song from Asami since the fourth anniversary. My god. So, other people have seen the song in the past, but, like, this is the first time we've heard Asami seen it solo like this since the fourth anniversary. That's wild to me. Oh my god. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So where where do I even begin with this one? Like this is again like so many of Chihaya's songs are some of my favorite songs in all of Idol Master because like Asami Mai is just one of the most flawless singers I've ever heard of, I've ever heard in my entire life. It was just like despite all the wild appearances and reveals that took place during this concert like just asami being asami is enough to completely uh win out in the end and that's just amazing to see oh my god she just always delivers in every performance just such a powerful song so like incredibly confident and awesome and everything just everything that you love about chihaya and yeah i unfortunately didn't get yakusoku which is my favorite idol master song but like i said um, hopefully they're saving that for the day where I could watch them in person and I could see that performance in person. I will absolutely ball immensely. I will ball for the rest of my life, bawling my eyes out. And yeah, you'll just see rain outside and they'll just let you know that Midnight is crying somewhere because Midnight got to watch Asami Imai sing Yakusoku in person. That's my dream. That's my hope one day. And I really, really hope I can make it happen. Oh my god, so she absolutely delivers, there's nothing short of absolutely perfect, and yeah, after that we only have one more solo to go, and this is truly the last solo we got, and of course it's with our fearless leader, Eriko Nakamura, I'm yours. For the final time, say it with me folks, Master Artist 4, Haruka Image Song, Concert Debut! 
Oh boy, first time hearing this song as well. I never heard this before until now, and it's a great stinking number. Also, I love this pose right here. She's like giving Ariana Grande a run for her money <laughs> right there. Oh my god, it's really, really cool. So then, honestly, after hearing this for the first time, I'm first of all, I'm so glad that I heard it in this setting, hearing Eriko sing it live on stage because of the energy that she was able to bring on the stage with it and seeing the performance that she gave. But also, like, it is probably one of my favorite Haruka performances as a whole, like, both with Haruka and with Eriko um, live in person, just because, like, it's so incredibly powerful and just, like, letting out all the energy, showing that, like, no matter how much time passes, she hasn't, like, uh, lost any of her appeal. She's only gotten better with age. She's just absolutely incredible from beginning to end. Just, like, belting out these high notes and everything like that. She makes an effort to run across the entire stage during the during the performance, waving to each and every individual nook and cranny of the stage in the audience, making sure to, like, stay true to Haruka's, uh, ideals and just being like i could see you i see you no matter where you are i see you i'm performing for you and just as the song goes i'm yours just making sure everyone feels seen feels heard and making sure everyone could hear and see her it was just so incredibly beautiful powerful just didn't even begin to describe it just like it was the perfect note to end on with just like everything else that we had seen up to that point she just completely brought the house down it was amazing oh my god and as she finished she yells out to the crowd she says i'm yours and all of us are yours we are all yours referring to everyone throughout the entire idol master franchise so yeah after she says that she invites everyone else back on stage with her and now that everyone's gotten their solos done, you know what that means. It's time for the real goodbye. We play New Me Continued once again. This one doesn't have any differences from its day one appearance. It's just more so, like, it's the sign that things are coming to an end. What the fruit, h and Arc? I just looked back to the stream. Tier 3 sub? What? Give one tier 3 sub to, to people. What? Oh, I thought they... I just saw your name three times. I thought you just gave three tier 1 subs to yourself. I was like, how do you do that? Thank you so much for doing that, I appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. That is a cool pose, I like the outfit too. Oh my god, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for always being so generous with the gift subs. Actually, this actually holds relevance because I just recently received my very first uh, paycheck from Twitch because they had changed like the amount, like the payout amount, and that allowed me to actually get paid by Twitch for the first time, and I, I felt really grateful for that, and that's something that was only possible because of all of you and because of starlet and all those things all those streams that we did I, I had finally gotten acknowledged by it by twitch and i got paid for it which was incredible so that was very very fun i wasn't expecting that but um it definitely motivated me to want to like do this stream with all of you and like to return just say thank you for all that you've done so thank you so much for reminding me of that it was very very cool so yeah new me continued we're hearing this again it's the same performance as last time but just like with the knowledge of what this song means. It means it's time to say goodbye. And like I even though this is the second time hearing it, because now I know it's the goodbye song, I wound up being like even more emotional than I was the first time I heard it. Oh my god, it was just like this is truly feels like a farewell song and it's already become one of my favorite songs in Idol Master. And I love that I got to hear it in the um this all-star version with everyone singing it in together. It was just very beautiful. It was just a very emotional room. Everyone like had like faces of like wanting to continue and wanting to like stay here forever, but like it's time to uh, say farewell. But farewell is different than goodbye because we're still ha having the promise of like the hope and the desire of wanting to see each other again. Oh boy! And so it was just like a very beautiful performance. Everyone was in perfect harmony, in perfect sync. Again, like the same thing with the boots. Every time they were marching. You could hear the boots marching on stage because they were all doing it in unison. It was perfect. It was amazing. And, like, everyone was, like, completely silent and, like, listening to it and, like, completely immersed in it. And after it ends, like, Eriko has a very tearful goodbye to everyone. Just waves goodbye. And that's it. The show's over. Everyone could go home. Nothing else to see here. Except a new camera angle of the stage. Ooh, fancy. Because before we had, like, the one on the other side, when everyone was cheering for an encore, but now it's this side. So that's fun. So, um, 
Everyone starts clapping for an encore. Everyone in chat keeps typing encore. Um, trying to light the stage back up. Trying to get them back out here one more time because we don't want to say goodbye. And the president's still hanging out in the sunflower field <laughs> after two days. He uh, goes ahead and says, all right, we'll bring them out one last time. But first, I got to tell you about some merchandising. Uh, just again, tells you about merchandise, which is probably sold out by now and events and stuff. I think he announced an Idolmaster manga, which is like this, the first Namiko Pro specific manga that um, in X amount of years, I don't know the exact date, but um, uh, he announced a new manga series, which everyone was excited for. Uh, he announced uh, Nando Demowaro uh, being able, being added to Million Live, which was fun, specifically being added, um, the Namiko Pro All-Stars version was being added to Million Live, which is fun. And yeah, after that, he uh, welcomes everyone back out for the final performance. Quote unquote final performance, you know. Masterpiece. This was the biggest applause of the night. As soon as they returned, everyone made sure to let them know that they were very much welcome back and that we were over the moon happy to just be in this moment. We wanted to have it last forever. Masterpiece, if you don't know, is the finale song to the Idolmaster movie. It appeared in Starlet as well as DLC, and it is a very beloved song for a very good reason. And everyone knew this was going to be the encore, so they wanted to make sure that this applause was as loud as it could possibly be. And everyone was jumping around, jumping for joy. Everyone was so happy. There was, like, people smiling, people crying. There was, like, all different emotions, like, flowing throughout the entire room. Like, it was all a universal feeling of love and appreciation and that was just incredible to see and that's something that I just adore about all these seiyus it's just it's not just for the talent that they provide but also just for uh, make their unbreakable spirit and their ability to not only make their own dreams come true but to inspire others to do the same that's what Idolmaster does for me it just makes me feel loved it makes me feel hopeful it makes me feel not alone and it makes me want to do better and be better and I'm just I'm always going to be thankful to it for that. Get a bunch of waves from everyone. And then uh, right here, the final shot where everyone like lifts their glow sticks up with them as they raise their arms. And just everyone's in perfect harmony of feeling everlasting gratitude. Oh my God. It is, this was an absolutely wonderful experience from beginning to end. And now it really, truly, sincerely is time to say our farewells. So uh, I'll be trying my best to recite what everyone said. I apologize if I got some details wrong, but just trying to like piece it together as best as I was able to. Uh, Jerry thanks all the producers who've been supporting the Idolmaster for the past 17 years, and she hopes that we can all meet again like this again soon, especially for her who doesn't get to perform as often as everyone else does. Like This was just a very emotional moment for her and very important evening and event and she is definitely one of the main reasons that made it so special to begin with so we hope to see her again as well Manami gives thanks to her friends who helped her perform Ponde Beach today and talks about how wonderful the experience of voicing Hibiki has been for so many years and expresses her gratitude for being able to do this for as long as she has and hopes to see everyone again Rie thanks everyone for uh, who played a part in making this event happen and for encouraging her to do her best. And she uh, just thanks everyone for uh, supporting one another and like for making this event what it was. Asami, she finally got her towel! Hooray! The cycle was fulfilled. We were talking about towels at the beginning of the day of the concert, and now she finally got the towel. Dreams do come true. But no, she um she thanks all of her. She specifically thanks all of her Nichans and Nechans because that's what the twins call the producer. So she's saying thanks to all the producers who supported her over the years. Um, she also gives special mention to the people watching online. She looks directly into that camera and she thanks everyone all around the world who's supporting the Idol Master. Everyone in chat was saying was saying thank you, saying we love her, saying that we hope that um you come to America. We want to see you. We want to thank you in person. And it was just very heartwarming to know that she didn't forget about us. And I hope that she knows that we're never going to forget about her. Azumi says that it feels like a miracle to have created a stage like this with all the members of Namiko Pro All-Stars Plus. She thanks everyone, uh, both in person and online, for creating this opportunity and hopes to be able to reunite once again in the near future. And I'm sure everyone feels the same way. Oh boy. <laughs> Hello. 
Chiaki, she thanks everyone for coming out to the event. She talks about how wonderful the Idol Master has been for her and for the lives of so many others. And then she insists that everyone joins her in a special chant of her own creation before signing off. She had another chant at the end of day one where she made a bunch of interesting poses and noises, which I won't repeat. <laughs> um, she um, mentions Juicy again. I don't remember. It was either she was saying Juicy Halo or Juicy Party. Or maybe Juicy Holy. It was Juicy Holy or Juicy Party. I think it was Juicy Party, so she like wanted everyone to go and sync. With me like, when I say Juicy, you clap. When I say Party, you wave. When I say Idol Master, you, you shake your glow sticks or whatever. So, we're gonna recreate it right here. When I say Juicy, y'all need to clap and chat. And then when I say Party, you gotta clap. And then Idol Master, you clap, alright? Alright, on the count of three, we're gonna do this together. Hopefully, Twitch slow down chat thing won't mess this up in any way. Juicy! Party, Idol Master, Psycho is what she said, which means like so cool or something. I believe. I hope I'm getting that right. Oh my God! And with that, Chiaki's juicy tyrannical reign has come to an end. For now, anyway. Yumi. <laughs> okay. Yumi talks about how special this group live was for her and thanks the staff for making it possible. Uh, she thanks the th uh, everyone from the fans and everyone for supporting her for so many years and to all of her friends for sticking with her and sharing this experience with her. Uh, just like all of us, she hopes that this gathering won't be the last and she promises to continue to do her best so that she could ensure that it won't be the last time we're all together again. She's gonna try her best to make it happen no matter what. And we're always going to stick together as long as she'll continue to perform. Oh boy. <sighs> and Hiromi, my favorite idol of all time. Hiromi touches back on her wishes for the new year, mentions how it was a goal of hers to create a group live like this for, with everyone this year, and how it will remain to be her dream for every year going forward. She gives thanks to everyone who made it possible, and just gives a very graceful Makoto bow. Naomi. She wore her heart on her sleeve the entire stinking performance. From beginning to end, she was the light of this entire room. She lit up the entire venue from beginning to end. She wears her heart on her sleeve more than anyone. She adores this franchise more than anyone. And she wanted to make sure that her feelings reached everyone, not just everyone in the venue, but also everyone watching all around the world. So she somehow managed to scream even louder than she did yesterday without completely destroying her voice. She ditches her mic and just yells louder for everyone in the entire world to hear. She just yells, everyone, I love you. And we all love you too. Oh boy. Um, Maya got something funny from yesterday. It was like after she, after Naomi had done like her uh, big loud I love you speech to everyone, uh, Maya go did like a super quiet thank you. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna give the quietest thank you now. No, but she, um, for this one, she expresses how nervous she was when going into this event and how everyone involved made it such a wonderful and easygoing time from beginning to end. She just thanks everyone for their support. And with for someone as wonderful and cheerful and kind-hearted as her, like there could be nothing less that she deserves as everyone's support. <sighs> Akiko thanks everyone for uh, their excited reaction to the nostalgia performance. Of course, she talks about Miki's growth throughout the franchise and how it's very much intertwined with her own. She's grateful for how far she's come, but she promises to never forget about the events that helped her get to where she is today. And I sincerely hope we see Awaken Miki again someday. Asami. Asami uh, does start to break down on at this moment. She's on the verge of tears. Thanking everyone who came out to support her as well as all of her friends in Namiko Pro for coming and helping her believe in, believe in her from day one and helping her get to where she is now. She's forever grateful to have Chihaya in her life as well as all of her friends and their shared irreplaceable memories that they have with each other. She hopes to create many more in the future. <sighs> and finally, Eriko. 
Eriko reflects on what the 17 year long journey through the Idolmaster franchise has been for her. She thanks all of her friends and all the producers for supporting her dream and expresses her desire to be an idol for everyone for the rest of her days. And just as she's about to sign off, she tries to say we are like she starts to like announce who all of them are. She says we are Namiko Brawl All Stars. But then she just starts she breaks into laughter as she's trying to like sign off and she tries to like clear herself of any giggles or whatever before she says tries to say it again and I don't even know how to describe this this was like one of if not the most bizarre moment of the night um when she tries to like focus herself to try and like say that message again she clears her throat and then in she just has the most dead serious look right into the camera and then she just starts speaking in the deepest voice I've ever heard from her and then also speaks in English for some reason. <laughs> she just says, We are Namiko Pro All Stars. <laughs> and everyone loses it. Everyone's laughing their stinking butts off. And I'm just like, I was so stinking tired at that point. And I was like so like overwhelmed with emotions already. So I had like no idea what to even make of that. Everyone was like laughing their butts off. And I'm just like, what is happening? Is she just like, is she trying to talk to the international audience? Is she saying that we're coming to America? Is she just trolling us? Is she just being a, a funny fella? Like, what is happening? I was like so confused. I was laughing so much. I was like, I'm trying to cry, but I'm also laughing. I don't know what to even think right now. Oh my God. It was, it was so wild. I just don't even know what to make of it. It was amazing. That's all I could really say about it. Oh. <gasps> my god so yeah that happened and of course it's not actually over we need one more encore after the previous encore and there is one specific song that you need to have for an idol master concert that has not made an appearance yet you know the one you know the the one that should have been at like the beginning but then again they have it at the end to represent that this isn't the end it's just the start of a new beginning. So of course, we cannot say goodbye without hearing the Idolmaster theme performed by the Namiko Pro All-Stars Plus. Oh my god, here we go. This is truly, sincerely, the final song of the night. Oh my god, no matter how many times I hear I can never get tired of this song. Like, it's, it's our anthem, it's our theme it's like even compared to like all the different themes of all the different generations of Idolmaster it stands on its own as being like completely unique and it's completely different from any other song I've heard and it's just it's a song that I never get tired of it represents the entire franchise and always it's just always a joy to hear them these members sing it together like this and all together on stage it was just absolutely wonderful and then <laughs> and then these three do this pose because why the fruit not? They're the idols that change the world. They could do whatever the fruit they want. I just love <laughs> It's like I'm trying to ball my eyes out right now. And then here always trying to make me laugh. How dare she? She just does this and I absolutely love it. <laughs> and then everyone else is just hilarious and amazing. Everyone's happy and having an amazing time. And um, also the dance routine got updated because like it changes from game to game and like they're doing the dance routine from Starlet Which I believe this is the first time it's appeared like this on stage. I could be wrong though But yeah, just like seeing the dance routine that we saw in Starlet season, which is amazing uh, Another special thanks to the background dancers, which is wonderful And then everyone uh, is in perfect harmony with vocal dance and visual appeal. Nothing is able to ruin this moment Nothing can break this all-star team spirit Oh my god, I'm just a complete emotional wreck this entire time. We got one more juicy Chiaki pick before saying goodbye, because of course we do. This one! So, Nami's found something on Mayuko's dress, outfit, and like, I don't know what it was, but like she ripped it off of her, and then she threw it into the audience, and then Mayuko was just laughing her butt off. I have no idea what the fruit it was, but I'm sure she made some fan out there really happy, whatever it was. Maybe it was just like a streamer or something, I have no idea. So that was very fun. And the song comes to a close. We get one last look of all the members of this amazing group. And they take their final stance. They 
point right at the audience. They do the final pose and they go out with a bang. I could have timed that so much better. Bang! Good job, me. I haven't slept in 87 days. Oh my god. Eriko gives her final words and says that she says at the end of every concert of just how much she appreciates everyone, how much how thankful she is that everyone who showed up. And uh, the final words said at the concert are said by both the audience and by everyone on stage. It's the title that unites us all as one. The Intermedia Artists and Specialists, better known as IMAS. And with that, that is the Idolmaster Namiko Pro All Stars Sunrich Colorful Live. <sighs> Everyone exits the stage after concluding a legendary event that will go down in history as one of the best performances this group has ever done. And the two that started it all leave hand in hand, ready to face the new chapter of their lives together. And that's it. They say their farewells. It's a site that reminds us of the bonds created under the Idolmaster name, and it's a bond that will last for a lifetime. <sighs> and then Katori joins the president back in the Shadow Realm. And it's at this moment where I come to the realization that if we could see Katori's clothes in silhouette form, but we can't see the president's, then that just means that the president's been naked this entire time, and that's the only reason why we aren't allowed to ever see what he looks like. And now you can't unsee it, and I've ruined this entire franchise for you. <laughs> but on a more wholesome note, um, the crowd continues to applaud them, and they continue to, like, like, chant and clap for an encore, even though this is truly the end of the show. But rather than an encore for right now, they're just expressing their desires to see them again. And the stream ends with this final shot from the audience of this one post-it note that says, Imas is the best. And that's it. That is the end. He's wearing the Detective Conan uh, suspect suit. <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, that is it. We made it through both days. It was a four hour stream. I knew it. Okay. Uh, how do I take this away? Okay, cool. Ay, ay, ay. He's not naked, he's just wearing a really tight suit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, boy. We somehow made it through the entire event. Thank you so much to everyone who, like, who tuned into this one, who just listened to me talk your ears off for a long, 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 stinking time. I hope you had fun. I, <clears throat> that was my goals to like create a time capsule of this event for myself and also just to share this experience with all of you because it was something that like i i had no idea how much it was going to mean to me until i actually went through with it because like just by how much i love the idol master i didn't think that i would get a whole lot out of a, a digital concert viewing i was just like why well, can't i just watch it on youtube why would i want to do this but being able to support them right then and there and getting to meet other people and also getting to just hear all these people's stories and their reactions and everything but the thing that made it probably the most special of all was right at the end right at the end right before uh, the stream signed off and like everyone was kicked out of the chat room everyone in the chat was uh, exchanging contact info and like where you can find each other on social media and it was that moment where this entire event became a thousand times greater than it already was so some of you may be wondering why or how could i have possibly known all that information to begin with like you say to yourself midnight you went through a 250 hour rpg using a translator because you don't know japanese we all know that you don't know japanese so how could we have any sort of faith in anything you told us about this event how could we trust anything you said throughout this entire stinking live stream the reason for that, the reason I know what they were saying from beginning to end was because, the power of hindsight, <laughs> no, was because there was someone in chat who knew Japanese and was translating the event on the fly for everyone 
in the chat. And once the stream ended, that person messaged me saying that she had known me from several years ago. And she was happy to see me at that event. Her username is Chihaya X Yayoi. She's an online friend that I made in my first year of Let's Play. Not even my first year. She's the friend I made during my first Let's Play. And we reunited with each other at an Idolmaster concert of all places. So it was thanks to her that I was able to enjoy this event as much as I was able to. Oh my god, when that happened, I was just, I was completely blown away. I was exhausted, but like, I immediately messaged her on Discord. I was just like, oh my god, I'm so happy to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. And like, I had, like, I feel like I might have known she moved to Japan at one point, but like, she knows Japanese. She's, I think she's still living in Japan right now. Like, she was able to translate things on the fly because she studies Japanese and she knew what everyone was saying. And it was thanks to her that I was able to give all this information to all of you as well. It would not have been possible without her. And it was just incredible that, like, after all this time, like, she still recognized me. She recognized my username that was in the chat. And she was still able to just, uh, we were able to reunite with, like, with one another. Okay. But yeah, that's, that was what ended off the night. And that was what made this event so incredibly special to me. So then, that's about all I have to say, really. We hit the four-hour mark! Hooray! So now I could end the stream. Um, he's not live yet. I was sort of hoping he would be. Uh, the person I wanted to raid... I guess I'll just link the account if I could find it. Um... So this evening, this weekend, uh, Steven George, if you know him, he's a friendly young fella. He is teaming up with all of his buddies and friends and doing his annual Extra Life stream where they raise money for their local children's hospital. They have raised a gajillion trillion dollars in the past. It's one of the biggest uh, charity events of like the season, honestly. They have been on the front page of Twitch and like have raised like record-breaking numbers of money for their children's hospital. It is an absolutely incredible event, super fun, super amazing, like an incredibly good cause. So much good is done during that event. So they're going to be doing a test stream in I believe half an hour or so. So I want you all to go to their uh, their Twitch channel so you could uh, support the event and the event's going to be happening all day tomorrow so be sure to tune in and uh, support the cause because it's very very good it's a very uh, wonderful cause and the second they do like a PS4 stream like the theme is like Wii and Wii U the second they do any sort of uh, PS4 stream or PS3 stream we're all pushing for Idolmaster that's our goal right now but Baby City Mama is up there for like one of the games that might get played and of course that's a very that game's very much associated with my uh, audience for reasons. So if you want to see a new generation of babysitters, then go ahead and check that out. Uh, Extra Life starts proper at 12 p.m. EST. Thank you for letting me know. And yeah, that is it for today. But is it the end of Starlet is the question. Like I said, I missed this... Uh, setting and this feeling immensely. I wanted to return to Starlet so badly, even though we had already completed literally everything the game has to offer. And I was grateful that I had a new opportunity to uh, talk about Idolmaster with all of you. But now that that's done, what else could we do? As fate would have it, there is indeed something that I left undone in Starlet Season. I'm not making any promises as to when this happens, because like I said, I really wanted the latent movie review to be out by now, so I'm gonna say like, once the latent movie review is out, I might be back on Twitch with the return of Starlet Season. Because we have some unfinished business, believe it or not, after three playthroughs, we still have some stuff to do. And I feel like it, we've spent enough time away from them to where we could have a heartwarming reunion and uh, create some new memories once we go for 1,000% completion, as I'll refer to it as. <sighs> but with that, we are done here for today. 
Thank you all so much for watching. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.